Welcome to another episode of Pierre's Panic Room. You know how we do it every week. And every week we have a flashy and fly guest. And this guest is no different, man. This is a special. I'm excited about having my man on the show. But before we get into the show, you know what I got to do. I got to read y'all comments. Stuff that y'all put in there that my, my uh, uh, I guess I'm going to call it my assistants. Pull off the internet and make me read them. So here we go. All right, we're going to go. This is from the Funny Marco Show. Dimitri Allen says, I died laughing when you said he looked like Seal. Oh, well, <laughs> if you know Funny Marco look like that. But he was started with me first. Y'all watch the show? He came at me first. He's one of them young bucks, you know, who when them pranks is on social media, thought he can come up against an OG with some jokes. Well, you know, it got a little different, didn't it? Okay, you know what it is. All right, and this one here is from the Bruce Bruce episode. Kingfish writes, just order the Manscaped package using your code. The episode was fire. Oh, okay, okay. The commercial is kind of funny. Come on, let's be real with it. All right, y'all. This right here is from the first George Wallace episode. And this is from The Box Throwback. Writes, Pierre portrayed the perfect antagonist to Wallace's elderly innocence. I like that. Okay. From the mama jokes, Will Smith rant, and the fake injury. This interview, this interview was brilliant. Thank you so much, the box, uh, the box throwback. Man, me and George Wallace had such a good time that I had to bring him back again. Y'all saw, yes, you had to bring him back again, man. And um, didn't realize that, that, that FU situation, that thing went viral, man. Everybody, man, George called me and said, yo, man, people are calling me from all over the world. He said even bishops and pastors are talking about how funny that thing was, man. So there it is. This episode, well, yo, I feel like it's going to be just as funny, man. I'm excited, man. This is a vet in the business, somebody I look up to. Um, y'all know him. Y'all love him, man. I think he's one of the most underrated comics, man, to be honest with y'all. Give it up for the one and only, the legendary, Mr. Don D.C. Curry! Come on, y'all. Show him some love. Come on, y'all. Show him some love. Yeah, yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Have a seat, brother. Woo-wee! Oh, All right, man. I, got you. I got you in here. Pull that microphone closer, man. I can hear everything you say, brother. You know how this thing goes. You know how this game goes, man. All right, brother. First of all, man, thank you so much for coming, man. Really, DC. Yeah, I did, man. man. Thank you for yeah, having yeah, me, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've known you a long ass time. Too long. long ass time. Too like, long, man. In fact, I did a little. I thought I knew you, but I started doing some history and some back search from you, man. You, you, you. you there's some things that surprised me. <laughs> it really, it really was. I'm about to break them down to you. This is some things that surprised me. One is, um, first of all, you born, you were born in Fort Worth, right? No. Man. Don't believe everything you, you see on the where internet. Where you from, man? Chicago, man? Where you from? I was born in Denver, man. Let, Denver. Me, let me break that oh, down for you. Because I know what you oh, did all right. right away when right. people right. say it. Right. Okay, all right. Wikipedia all right. has me and the former middleweight champion of the world. They have our history. Donald Curry, of, yes. His name, yes. first name, middle name, and last name, same as mine. He is from Fort Worth. They bet that about a Donald <laughs> Eugene Curry, man. And what's so funny was, I, I, I thought about it, I said, well, I never know you come from, from, from Dallas, but man, I thought yeah, about it. Yeah, I was going to say, I got five kids. That's true, nigga. And a wife. That's true, nigga. That part of it. I ain't got none of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got four kids and a girlfriend, <laughs> <No>. okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you were born in Denver, but I'm thinking, what's about the connection to Chicago, your father being a pastor? That's where I grew up. In Chicago. I grew up in Chicago. Did you grow up in the hood of Chicago, or did you grow up in Peoria, like 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 uh, Richard Pryor, like on the outskirts, man, where no, it was, like, was easy? I was, I was on the south side. In the I was in the hundreds, man. The, the wild hundreds. I heard the, the wild, wild hundreds, man. And, and why they call them wild hundreds? Because it's crazy anywhere from hundred on. South side was rough, but the real rough side was the west side. Really? Yeah. But well, south why? side, you know, it was like you know, media. It was like right. on south side, your parents made like between ten and twenty thousand dollars a year. Okay. <laughs> what, 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 what are you what talking about? Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So you. Uh, okay. Ten. But because everyone always wants to say South Side, we say, "Where you from? Chicago? South Side? South Side? Everybody wants to yell South Side. You know. South Side long. There's a long way to do, boy. Now here's. Come I know a about, lot of lane. What is uh? No. What is um? Inglewood. Where's that? I know that's rough. Inglewood. Inglewood and I don't know where Inglewood is. Oh, Inglewood, Chicago. I know yeah. Inglewood, California. No, no, no. Inglewood is no good. What? Yeah, Inglewood is a rough part in uh, Chicago. I don't know if that's. I don't remember Inglewood. You remember yeah. Inglewood? Okay, no. okay. I mean, it got worse when you left. Oh you started yeah. getting bad oh, in the oh, in the forties yeah. and fifties. And I remember mean, growing the up there. I used to go wherever <laughs> I wanted to go. I go back now and see my yeah. daddy, boss. Now hold on. Your father was a pastor too. I hear. He was a my doctor. Was a pastor. Wasn't he a doctor too? 
No. What do they call him doctor? No. Nigga, no. I mean, he got doctors. He got a doctor's degree. Okay. Degree, but he, he, he's well, I know he wasn't a doctor, but. Because yeah. you go to, can't you become a. His brother's a doctor. His brother's a doctor. He's 100. My dad is 97. Is he still alive? Yeah, he's not 97. If he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Do that, do that. We want to edit a lot of this shit out, nigga. No, no, he keep us in. That's funny. He said he ain't 97 if he did. You got a point. I'm gonna remember that. Okay. Um, <laughs> only so, person 97 and, and dead but still alive is George Wallace. Oh hell no! Oh, you know he talked some shit about you. He came for you. He man. came for you, man. I, I had to try to save you, man. That nigga. That's man. my man. He man. said you don't do comedy. DC stands for don't do comedy. And I said damn, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> <laughs> he did it for it. He did it for it. All right, let me ask you this question in here. Okay, coming from becoming a preacher's son, how did you come become a comedian using the language you use? <laughs> oh, come on, man. I ain't that bad, man. Come on. I ain't that bad, come man. On. A motherfucker gonna slip out your mouth every three or four <laughs> seconds. A goddamn gonna pop out now. Come on, DC. I actually, man, I, you know, I, I get caught up sometimes. Right, man, right. My mouth get carried away with me. <laughs> with me. But uh, I tell you this, since you brought it up, that's not what my material is about. But I do use some. Uh, oh no, you got some exclamatory good language. Damn, exclamatory! Hell no. Okay, let me ask you. Um, I didn't realize this. In a younger age, you was a baseball player. Yeah, I, was, I played for the Tigers for a minute. What? Victoria Blues, Canada, and San Luis uh, Giants in Mexico. And why don't we have a card on you? Uh, you back that good? then, <laughs> no, back then what they would do when you sign, when you got in the minors, you sign a contract for a card. And that was just so they had you locked down. So if you got to the big leagues, mm. they already had you under deal. So I signed the contract, but I never got to the big leagues. Nice. What, what position did you play? I signed as a first baseman, then I became a catcher. That's why I walk like I walk. Really? He's a catcher? <laughs> I turned it to a catcher. They turned it to a catcher. To, to me, that's the hardest they position. my knees. Like, hell yeah. Behind. Yeah. He was old Carlton, Carlton Fisk. You know, Carlton <laughs> Fisk. Come on. You know, I remember Carlton Fisk. Come on now. You know, I yeah, knew Carlton Fisk. I played Hebner and wow. Fidget Monk, Fidget. And, yeah, man. You was a good baseball player. I was a decent man, but they suggested I be a comic. Uh, who's, oh, oh, the league, the league, yeah, damn. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I had ball, man. Damn, okay. I had ball. Okay, so after, I, let's go with this. Let after, me stop right there and say something. Okay. I won the Chris Tucker golf tournament yesterday. Did you win that? I saw some of the players in there. You should have won. You, <laughs> won you went for sign my, up. My team won, man. My team won. What'd, you, what'd y'all hit, a 50 under? No, we actually were 22 under. 22 under? Damn. We buried it every hole. And uh, two holes with eagles. You know, another comic I know is good. Sherman Golden was he out there? Sherman was out there. Yeah, he can play that. They can play that thing. Man, Sherman be playing. He practice all night and everything. He, he always plays. He, he Sherman play every day. You know what? I try to get into golf. It doesn't do it. It ain't hit my soul yet. They say. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a smart man's game. <laughs> Boy, if you don't get the fuck out of here with that bullshit, man. <laughs> what the fuck? That's why it hit my soul. I love it. Yeah. You, you, it, it's funny. I played, in a, I played one time in a celebrity tournament in, in Arizona. And, you know, you, I think you play backwards sometimes. You play somebody starts from the first hole, somebody starts from the 18 and goes back. I guess y'all play like that. I don't know if you ever yeah, played like that. Yeah, it's called shotgun. Somebody started every hole. That, that otherwise, you'd be there all, all Okay. Day, you know? So we started on, like, the 18th or whatever the hole. Yeah. And they said, um, you know, I had to knock it off in, like, with some rocks and shit onto the, to the uh, whatever. What do you call that? The field? The court? <laughs> no, nah, the green. They got fucking with you. <laughs> it's not even that smart, motherfucker, okay? The greens, nigga. Ain't to my collar either, motherfucker. <laughs> so the, the greens. But, why I hit off? I got like three feet from the hole, and everybody was like, "Oh shit, we got a golf on our side." I didn't realize the room it, it was slanted and all that shit. <laughs> Nigga, after that, they were dropping balls for me every other hit after that. I just got lucky on the first one. They were like, "Damn, we got a fucking golf on!" I hit like three feet from the hole. I said, "This ain't nothing. I can do this all day long." <laughs> Nigga, they were like, "Man, you, you. And they, man, they were just walking me off. Look at them. Let's move on. We got to move on to the next hole. We, we got to, we got we done time constraint, and it's hot out here. Nigga, let's keep it moving and shit." So yeah, so golfing is something. Else. Shout out to those who uh, golf. A lot of people golf, so shout out to those golfers. It just never hit me. Guess I ain't smart enough, but we'll, we'll move on. I don't give a damn what you're saying. So okay, you went from being a, a minor league baseball player who didn't make it in the minor league. Okay, you ain't that smart, nigga. Okay? We, we're talking major league comics right here, okay? <laughs> nah, fuck with you. So, from there, when did you start getting into comedy, thinking you could be a comedian? If you played a baseball player. Man, I'm going to tell you a true story. I'm going to I'm 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 downsize it. Okay. But when I was playing baseball, mm-hmm. all through college and through uh, in the pros, it was in the, like, disco era, you know? And so, mm-hmm. after games, 
Everybody would roll their sleeves, roll their jacket sleeves up and go and dance. Yeah, so. I never did that. I never I couldn't dance, man. So I would go as long as I can remember in my career. I would go to the to a comedy club and we were out of town on the road after games. Wow. I go to comedy club and I used to like open mic night. Okay. Because I used to watch the, I used to watch the guy. I know this sounds bad, man, but I used to watch the rookies having a rough time. That was funny to me. That was funny shit in the world to me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So I'd be sitting there and I analyze and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one thing led to another, and I was in a comedy club uh, after I got uh, released. And they ran out of comics and they asked anybody want to go up. And I, you know, I looked around the room, nobody in there knew me. So I said, I ain't got nothing, I ain't got nothing to lose. And I went up, and that was uh, 11,009 shows ago. Oh, I'm about to say 11, I thought that was a year. How old is you? BC? <laughs> BC? I was in 11,002. I went on stage. Oh, uh, no. 11,009 uh, shows. Uh, okay. I've documented every show. Ever. Wow. Wow. Okay, so here's my thing. What, when you were playing baseball, what city were you in that you was, what comedy club you went to? That, that, was that like the home you started working Where, at? Wherever club? we were on the road, you know, the guys would go right. out after the game, but I would go out. We, I was based in Lakeland and then. Uh, Lakeland, Florida, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where you started doing most of your comedy at, down Florida first? No, nah, I started basically in Chicago. Oh, you went to Chicago? Right to Chicago. But my first paid gig was, was in Atlanta. Oh, sure. They, they paid niggas. Over for Paul Mooney, I was supposed to get $70. We were doing 14 shows. What? I was supposed to get $70, $5 a show. And no. at the end of the week, Gary Williams gave yeah. me a note. Say I owed him $82 more. Cause you was drinking. Liquor. Hell yeah! <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't no yeah. Yeah. What you thought? Liquor was free? Not with not with that's Gary. What I thought, man. Not with Gary and him. That's no. what I thought, no. man. That was at the Comedy Act Theater, probably. Comedy Act Theater. Yeah, that's my yeah. first gig over for Paul Mooney. Hell yeah! Now let me tell you, before you got into comedy, because this is what I realized when you were in comedy, though. You, you and your brother did a construction company, didn't you? I remember that, because I was yeah. in the house, you got all kind of shit up. Let me tell you, this nigga, you go to this nigga's house, he got a palacious big ass place, but he got more beat up shit all around, tanks and trains and plumbing. Yeah, he be talking about my, uh -huh. my, I got a lot of land he man, be talking about. What? That little Wild tiny house and shit. Be, that little tiny house, hey, man. It's just me playing. But the land you got, nigga, is ridiculous. He got, we were doom buggy, we don't get to that mother. He got the four wheelers and shit. You come over to the house, you got, you got shoes for you, like you were the bowling alley and shit, nigga. You want to put them shoes on, take them hard shoes off, and let's get on there. And he don't give a fuck. Mud, all kind of shit. It's like a, it's like a playground for grown ass kids. And it, don't a lot of comics come over there and fuck around with you? Yeah, you know I got a television show now based on that. Oh, do you really? I bought another farm in Hogansville. I bought 50 acres in Hogansville, Georgia. And uh, my television show is called Nap Nappy Valley. As nice. opposed to Napa Valley. Okay. And uh, I got uh, seven unemployed comics. Quote, unquote, unquote, unemployed. Sure, sure, we sure. We all unemployed during the pandemic. Sure. So I bought this land to, to develop and turn it into a farm. And I got seven comedians, uh, comedians out there tearing my equipment up and, I, I and can just see that. tearing my farm up. Man. Dude, I thought I was at a place that had equipment, <laughs> nigga. When I saw more cranes and shit, all kind of trucks and tanks and shit, I was like, what is going on here? But it was so much fun, man. So I enjoyed it. I want to come back to that thing. And what's funny about this man is he has like, we're talking about like real four wheel and shit. You can go up hills and go through dirt mud and through slides. And this Negro. <laughs> You take everything serious, nigga, okay? <laughs> he don't give a fuck, you get mud on you. Wing, 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 nigga. Like, nigga, these are brand new motherfucking stuff. Like, you know, you crazy? Man, you we have so much. come out there in the if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some. Okay, I ain't never lie about that. Damn. So, so y'all had a construction, y'all have a had a construction. Yeah, my brother was contractor, so when I got, when I got released from the Tigers, I came here thinking I would mess around for a year. And I get called back to play baseball, right. and I never got called back. Right. So I ended up staying with the construction. Now, we built uh, highways, bridges. You know. Yeah, man, around Atlanta, all around the Atlanta area. Uh, all around the South. Um, you know, we did Florida, Tennessee. Oh, oh, for, oh, further than just Atlanta. Texas. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. But yeah. we were based in Atlanta. Yeah. That's why your ass can say no to when you for, for shows and money and stuff. So no, they try to offer you some money. <laughs> I, I, I always say no. You know what I be saying? Yeah, what? Pierre told me he got twenty two thousand. Oh, <laughs> Lies, man, but no, this dude, you know, everyone else might say, hundred dollars, we'll, we'll be there, we'll be there. This nigga here, like, man, hell no, I mean, I got a tractor trailer coming, I got a tractor, I build shit, nigga, are you crazy? You may put another two zero behind that, and yes, sir, Mr. 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 So, no, no, I, I thought that was fucking fab fabulous, fantastic. Um, all right, so, not today. But usually you're a very well dressed man. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you thought this was on ham radio, nigga. This mother came in like he's gonna be drawn in this mother. Okay, he's gonna draw a picture of this mother. Okay, you know you said me up. I said hell man. no. You I got my tux on. 
Who I set you up? How I set you up? I said, come on down to my you were talking to me like okay. this was radio. Right. I did not. How, how, how do I talk radio? How does it sound when it says radio? I said, come on down to my panic room, my podcast. Everybody's on it. It's a great ass show. You're like, okay, I'll be there. I thought you had seen it before. Negro, you ain't seen my show before. Because I thought it was coming on the same time as I do mine, which is Wednesday night. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, we taped it on, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, man. And you came I'm out sorry, here and gave man. two fucks. You came like you about to get on I, your I ain't, I ain't even had a shower, Pierre. I, I could tell. I, you, I'm just going to fess up. I was on my tractor. <laughs> I believe that. Well, you, look, you was on the four-wheeler and came out. I was on my tractor. I've been drinking. I've been smoking. You're perfect. This is how I want you. This is a fucked outfit. I want you just like you are and shit. Fuck that. So, so yeah. So I, I see you always when you're out. You've been, you've been dressed always. I've never seen you undressed on a stage. Is that a something from your your upbringing, or is this a style you want to try to convey? Like, now look, nobody's ever asked me that. That's why I'm asking, bro. But I'm gonna tell you. Okay. And this is the honest to God truth. Back in the day, when I was just getting going, back in the day, you remember when we right. were getting going, mm -hmm. and we would go to the uh, white club. I mean, that's sure. what it is. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And uh, they would insist that you dress a certain way. So I ain't had no problem with it. I was young in the game, no credit. So, you know, sure. you basically did what they said. Sure. But in my mind, I always said, even though I was being forced to dress for the white clubs, I was not going to do less mm. in the black club, mm -hmm. even though it wasn't required. Mm. Mm -mm. So that's, that's, so, you know. Okay, let me ask you, and that's a good question, because it's funny, St Steve Harvey kind of mentored me into dressing nicer. Let's put, use that word. You know, I yeah. came to his club, nigga, like, what you got on? Yeah, like, yeah I'm, I'm about to go on stage, nigga, that's yeah. what I got on. I got my outfit on, nigga. These jeans and this goddamn t-shirt, nigga, that's about to go on. He looked at me like, uh, 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 uh look on my head. Uh, when he had Buku rays and shit, yeah, you know, back then. Look at you, said, Steve, look nigga, at you, yeah, tell yeah, you down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just walk away from me like, like he disappointed in you. Oh, nigga, uh, I've worked so hard. Like he, was like, like, he was the first nigga with a suit on. Like, I tried, I tried. So I started wearing suits. And I believe sometimes it should be a comfortability factor. Some comics don't want to wear suits because they're not comfortable. Right, they're not comfortable. Um, that's why I don't think I should look down at comics who aren't dressed. But I feel like... If you can perform in a suit, it just takes you to another level. Because most yeah. people come out, they want to, they want to look, they want to be you. you know, what's the old saying? The, the men want to should want to want to look like you or be you, and the women want to be with you. you and and the people that paid to see you. Yeah. The people that paid to see you. So I mean, uh, no, not that you better than anybody, mm -hmm. or anything, but uh, I just think they deserve that respect. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to go. You know, gym shoes, gym. I think y'all have on the best gym shoes money can buy. Oh, yes, sir. Well, I mean, but that's my opinion. But I know some right. funny guys who, 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 who wear uh, T-shirts and, and right, what right, have you. Right, right, so right. So God bless them. Everybody, you know, can do their own thing. But mm -hmm. I think there is a there is a point where it's, uh, for lack of a better word, disrespectful to the paying people. Right, right. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. And, and, and that... And I don't think that it comes from old, well, I will say a little bit old school, because these young kids don't do that, you know, they don't really get dressed up. But I've seen young cats like Country Wayne, he dresses up, he wears a suit all the time, you know, his little yeah. suits and stuff. And, but there's comics like, there's a guy like Bill Bellamy, he don't wear suits, but he looks nice in what he wears. Oh, Bill, he, Bill he, be he, clean, yeah. though. Yeah, but he ain't a clean, suit, man. so yeah. I, I think there's a level of dressing down that you can still look up. Yeah, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Like that leather coat, them boots, the tote, oh, nice, them jeans, oh, right. Man. Yeah, be, be clean. Man. Oh, you know, no, Bill, a lot of comics like that, yeah, so. And I, you I, know, I don't, I, I can't remember last time I wore a tie, but I wear tucks most of the time. Right, 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 right. No, you're clean now. I just saw you in North Carolina, God damn, the jewels blinging and shit, ah, man, man, the collar upright and shit. I said, I, I thought you were about to lay down in the casket, nigga. I said, this, this is clean. clean. This is clean. Well, well, yeah, well, well you, know, I, you know, you was coming. I said, shit, no, but you taught me a lesson, nigga. I got to call a nigga for that, okay? I said, well, my gym outfit, nigga, shit. I had some shit I did. I, I just raked the yard earlier today. I had to wear that outfit, nigga, shit. But uh, it's okay. <laughs> All right, being that you dress so nice and, uh, you know, you're funny uh, and... I'm going to ask you a real question. Do you think you were overlooked, or why weren't you one of the kings of comedy, man? You were perfect for that look and that feel and that time. Actually, okay. I, I, I had a conversation, and it wasn't by me. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't initiate the conversation. Okay. And uh, at the time, uh, I didn't have a television show. Okay, right, because you did comic. Well, well, but you did Comic View in, in 95, 96, 97, something yeah, like that. Something like that, 94. Right. But I, I didn't have a television show. So, you know, God bless them, man. I, I, I'm proud of what they did, you know. Uh, I get it, I get it. But I didn't have, DL was on DL show. Yeah. Sid was on Steve's show. And Guy Toy didn't have a show either, nigga. Guy Toy didn't have a show. Bernie had a show. Guy Toy didn't have a show. Guy Toy wasn't King Comedy. Well, he was hosting it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Got to it. Yeah. Damon. And I don't know, no, I like Damon. That's my boy, guy. Yeah, Damon, I love them brothers. But uh, I just felt like you were would have been right in that pocket. Because it, it was three of them, right? It was Kings of Comedy? Four. Bernie oh, Mac. Steve, 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 Sid, and Dia. Okay, well, I can see five with you. Because you, I, I get it. You ain't got to say anything. I'm saying for you. I couldn't see you as a King of Comedy. Well, you look like it. one. You fit in that mold. You were funny as a motherfucker there. <laughs> I, I appreciate okay, that. You brother. might have been the jack of all trades. How I fuck appreciate that. You're the that, jack, but, uh, but I ain't man nobody. I know that's I, right. I, I, I've been all right. I've done all right. Well, you've done, you done and actually very, very well. You probably had to me the funniest set on BET, probably arguably one of the funniest sets on BET back in the days. Um, remember, I remember you talking about the OJs. I thought shit was funny. I'm kind of, uh, <laughs> black restaurants and shit, nigga. You killed that set. I don't remember, you, you might remember that set. Everybody out there remembers that set. That was hilarious. Uh, you set it off. You were much superior than most of us comics at that time. I'm going to keep it 100. That year you did that set. Now, the crazy thing was, you know, I thought she was going to host it, but they gave it to some more. Nothing wrong with some more. I think the next year they just gave it to you because you deserved it. <laughs> Fuck that, nigga. It's more funny, but nigga, you killed that set you did. <laughs> did you feel like you should have been a host? Did you? Did you feel like you, you, you should be? You know, a host? man, I really. Oh, competitions, man. They so. I mean, it's a judge thing. Yeah. You know, it just depends. So I wasn't tripping when right. I when I won Bay Area Black Comedy Company. Same thing. It came down to me and Cheryl Underwood, and I, I really could. I mean, I just went out there and had a good time, man. I, you know. Right, 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 I right. Time, I remember you won the you won the Bay Area Comedy Competition yeah. against Cheryl Underwood, and you had a manager that owned the Bay Area Comedy Competition. No, oh, that's pretty no. good. You did, you did pretty good. You did pretty good. No, nigga. I know, I know, I know what theory you're getting at. <laughs> You did a good job. You did no, a good I job. Didn't. At the time, I was managed by uh, Linda. By uh, King Okay, by Linda. Name. Okay, by Linda. Okay, I didn't know. I that. won the Bear Comedy, right. comedy Competition, which right. was uh, owned <laughs> by Tony Spire. Right, right, Tony Spire. And I signed from the Bear Competition, I signed a, a contract. I don't even know if they still give holding deal. I signed with well, yeah. Warner Brothers. Wow, okay. They were there at the finals, and they signed me to a deal. Nice. And a year later, I signed with, with Tony, Tony Spire. The great Tony Spire. Shout out to Tony Spire. I like Tony Spire. But yeah, he, 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 he did a lot. But yeah, you know, everybody thought that. You know, I know I, everybody I, accused me of that, but it wasn't true. But it's actually funny. I did it. This is a true story. I did a, I don't know where yeah, I did it. I think Chris Tucker was in it. I forgot who won it. But that was, the, that was the, for those who don't know, that was the thing. If you were signed with him, people thought you might have a better chance of moving on and winning. Remember? Because he signed a couple of comedians. You weren't signed with him, but after that, he still did the comedy competition, and he had signed a couple of comics that were in the comedy competition. I didn't know about that. Okay, and yeah. I hosted it for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. I had a couple of artists he had that was it with him. Okay, is that and right? That, that's what I heard, and I remember. I remember before. <laughs> look, it was three days, ninety comics, thirty a day, and we would to pull our name out the uh, number out of the hat. So it was yeah, thirty was back in the, order, first, the first night, the first first night on Friday, whatever it was. And I went to pool, and right before I went to pool, and this, this is why my career ain't shit right now. <laughs> shit, you done, done, you done well, bro. You know, I, yell, I yelled out in front of everybody, I said, Tony, can I sign with you before I pull out my number? <laughs> <laughs> everybody got quiet and shit. Tony was like, oh, motherfucker. I said, let me, let me sign with you because I, I need to win this motherfucker. And I came in fourth out of three, <laughs> okay? So it, it maybe didn't work that way well for me. <laughs> they said, nigga, you almost won. Damn! I said I gotta watch my mouth, but um, but yeah, that's what the rumor was. Um, okay. I'm gonna tell you this, man. Okay. Because I was there. You was there? Yeah. I got a stand ovation. Yeah. I sure did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got paper. That year, for three or four years, the people that got to the finals, they was bringing it, man. It was like yeah, anybody on any given night sure. could have won. They got to the Sure, fight. sure, 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 sure. I'm not going to say I really deserve to win, but I could have won. It wouldn't have been nobody saying, what? Because I got a stand ovation. I still got the tape of this shit. You know, yeah. people popping up. But it is what it is, you know. I'm not saying that, that was a trickery of it. I made a joke of it, and, it, you know, it was what it was. Um, but you definitely arguably had one of the greatest sets um, on it. Did Comic View, because you hosted Comic View after some more, and a lot of people don't realize, you did after some more before Ricky, before Bruce Bruce, 
for on this, Jay. A lot of heavy hitters you were on before. I think you did 95, 96, uh, around Somewhere that time. Yeah, before, right, yeah. Gary, right there. After me, it was Gary Owens. Gary Owens, Bruce yeah. Bruce. Bruce. Bruce Bruce. Right, Bruce Bruce. A lot of Sher Underwood was after you. Ricky. Yeah. Ricky Smiley was after you. Yeah, you was a four for you. Was four, four, it was only what? Cheryl, uh, DL, and Cedric. And then you. So, man, you was up there with the heavy hitters at, at first. Did BET cha that change your career? Did it do something for you different, you know, when you was a host oh, of it? Oh, it changed. It actually, it actually changed my life over, overnight. I mean, as far as right. just being Tommy. recognized on the streets and everything, and you know. Because I'm just regular, you know. And I mean, I, I, would, I would be shocked, man. Right. Right. When people would but recognize you. Recognize me. Yeah. I don't know if you remember this, man. This is something. One time I was in Chicago, and Chicago used to do like a four day festival, and they put three comics on one night, four night, whatever it was. And that's yeah. when he went, Man, I worked with you one night, man, and it's just, you shame me, nigga. I tried my best, nigga. You shame me. Fuck that, nigga. Come I went up there and I did my shit. Come on, man. I said, I don't no problem telling people to do it well. I don't, I don't. Because if I out rock you, I'll tell you the same shit, nigga. I got you that night. But if I didn't, I didn't. Man, that whole, I was just like, fuck, I'm trying. Now I'm rocking. I am rocking. I did rock it. I love Chicago. I ain't never seen you have bad yeah, shit. Yes, but you had a better set, nigga. Fuck that. Okay? I was like, everybody was like, Pierre, you killed it. And then Don DC couldn't. They like, okay, Pierre, you got it. Don DC, <laughs> Pierre Curry, you killed it. I'm like, damn, wow. I was mad that you was on my packet, nigga. I was like, every night you got to be on my same shit, man. For the three, we did, I think we had three shows with one night and stuff, but no, man. I remember so, that. You remember that? Yeah. Oh, my man. God, man. That was, I remember, it, man. I think we did the OJ joke, time, too, man. man. Oh, my God. The, OJ and the OJs and shit. It's, oh, that's, oh, that shit. This, 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 uh, oh, 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 that shit was a fucking, fucking brilliant, man. Brilliant. All right, we're gonna talk about some other things. So, let's talk about this. Let's get this. So, BT changed your, your trajectory of your of your career. That that's good. Um, then you you want to after that a couple years after that you got into the movies, uh, television first. What did you do in television? Remember I was on Grace Under Fire for. Uh, well, you was exactly, exactly. But a lot of people didn't know that. Nigga, a lot of black folks don't watch that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that white, white, white people call me uh, CD. I actually remember you on they the show. They could not yes. get that DC thing right. right. They right. like CD. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> CD. You know yeah. that stand for color dude. That's what it's saying, nigga. <laughs> the color dude. That's the color uh, you know dude. what I think it is? The color dude. <laughs> they can't grasp DC. As opposed to the the order the alphabet goes C D. Oh wow, wow, yeah. White folks gotta you know we gotta be in it's gotta be in a in, a, in a order in a rule and shit. <laughs> it's gotta be in that rule and shit. Um so let me ask you, so okay, Grace Under Fire, I remember that was Brett something, what's her name? Brett Butler. Brett Butler, That's man. My friend. I haven't heard she's she alive still? Yeah, she's oh, still alive. Does she do comedy? Uh, somewhat. Somewhat, somewhat. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I've heard here and there. I've been a couple places and they told me she was there or what? was coming. Yeah, because yeah. she was hot back then, boy. Oh, she was the mid-90s, she was crushing it, man. She was a couple hot. specials. She was, she was hot. She was making, she was making a lot of money. Right, right. Now, now being on a show like that, I'm glad you brought that up. Being on, on Grace Under Fire, look it up, y'all, Grace Under Fire. Um, did you feel like you... you Why are you assuming they haven't watched it? Because no, you no, didn't watch no, it. No, I know my my followers, nigga. Okay, <laughs> shit, they barely knew me, nigga. Okay, they're like, nigga, what you? Is your light skin guy from the movies this year? So I know they didn't watch it. Okay, <laughs> how about that? We do some research on here, mother. We, we, we find out who watches what. Okay, um, so with that being, did did you have to kind of curb who you were on that show? I had to do two things, man. I, I, I but not for the sake of. Uh, protecting myself or anything, but you know, for the sake of not. There were some things on there that uh, they would ask me to say, and uh, just for the sake of what I believe to be protecting my culture, I wouldn't say. Mm. But I didn't have to, uh, you know, make any, I was, it was more that than it was protecting me. Because as a stand-up, as you know, that's one of the beautiful thing about yeah, well, this discipline of entertainment. You can stand up and defend yourself. Because mm -hmm. so you got your, so, you know, I can go on stage and defend myself. But there were some things that I refused to say. Mm. And so, it wasn't that black, bad, and I don't think they had bad intentions. I don't think they didn't realize that some of the stuff was black offensive that they would ask me to say, and I'd be like, I'm not gonna say it. And we only bumped head a couple of times, and I won, because when they would turn all them cameras on, I just wouldn't say it. 
and you know back then Damn, it wasn't di it wasn't digital it was tape so you just gonna keep burning up the tape I can't remember that that line I can't remember I can't remember oh I'm blew it again <laughs> take forty seven damn damn you just refuse to say it <laughs> they were like that thing, that was the episode of who's this nigga coming to dinner <laughs> you were like I ain't gonna say dinner nigga I ain't gonna say dinner y'all <laughs> I refuse <laughs> to say dinner. <laughs> I'll say meal when I ain't gonna <laughs> eat. When I ain't gonna say <laughs> this nigga came to dinner. <laughs> you know what the big issue was on that? Uh -uh. I've never said it. What? <laughs> but you know, Brett Butler kind of scouted me out. You know, because I signed with Warner Brothers. They didn't have a place for me at the time. Back then, they would give you a hole in there. Right, right. They just pay you just to hold you. So you'll go nowhere else, right? And uh, then Brett requested that I be on her show. Grace Under Fire. Okay. And later on in the show, they wanted me. But see, this was in the uh, 90s. Right, mid-90s, right, right, 96, 97. And they wanted me to be Brett's love interest. Ooh-wee! And I, I don't think America was ready for that. <laughs> well, hold on, was America, wasn't you ready for it? Would you have been? I'm, in a, I'm an American. Hell no. <laughs> So you backed out of that, man? You could have been the first brother to break the color barrier, man. Nah, I ain't trying to be the first, man. Yeah, Brad wasn't that fine, though. No disrespect to Brad, but he was Oh, that's my friend. Uh, she was, uh, yeah, she was yeah. nice. Yeah, it might be nice, but you wasn't that fine. Nice. Though, okay? <laughs> nice and fine is two different things, nigga. Just be real. But uh, you wouldn't want color barrier. Okay. Brad, Brad would make $300,000 a week. Oh, uh, but, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. And I'm fine with that, okay? And when the show went in the syndicate, well, I don't want to put all the business Yeah, out. yeah, but damn, but you, uh. But she got millions, I, I and I, 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 I some chick. Right, right, but, but so you, uh, so you didn't want to kiss Brett Butler or be in a romantic scene because you didn't want to break the color barrier back I, then. See, there you go, man. Well, I'm just repeating you, brother. Would you do I it today? Say I didn't want to kiss. Would you and Would I, you and Roseanne Barr break the color barrier? I kiss her ass. Oh, oh, damn. <laughs> uh, Roseanne, my friend too. Right. That's why when Roseanne got in that trouble, man. Uh, I don't know if she, you know, what she said, what she said about the sister that used to work for Barack. I, I don't. Right. I I'm tend really... to think, and it's just because I know Rose. Right. Sure. That it was something said and taken out of context. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, I, I mean, look, I've known, I've known her history as much as I can. You know, from watching TV, she's a comic. She, I, I don't see the racism she's in her. Man. Let me yeah. tell you something else, yeah. man. You know, she plays that redneck and all mm -hmm. that on. Mm -hmm. She Rose, down. She Roseanne down. ain't nothing like that. Right. She down. And Roseanne, you show up every morning. We were all at the same studio, ABC. She show up every morning. I mean, she get out of the car. She look like Marilyn Monroe, man. A happy way. She had a drop top rose and a happy blowing in the wind. And <laughs> she nah, get out that nah. car. And then come in there and and, Dress and, up. and flip and right. go redneck. Right, for right, this show. right, right. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But some people, unfortunately, some people think when they see you in something that you're there, because you are uh, Uncle El Elroy in a lot forever. of them. You know what I'm saying? All the fucking work you done did. No, my God. But, when they, Roy, but when they see it, they see that's who you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? People should shout that out to you probably all the time, more kids, than anything else. Kids that wasn't even born when that was a show with me. Nah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's amazing, because I know I don't look. I know I don't look the same as I you know, be Right, but right, yeah, right, right. That's, that's amazing. Man. No, man, no, I remember that. So were you nervous stepping into that franchise, man? Did you know, cause that thing was huge, you know, Friday, the first one was huge. To do the second one, I don't want to fuck it up. Because y'all did fuck it up. <laughs> the second one was not as good as the, the first I one. I never panicked third. like that, yeah, man. Yeah. I've always <laughs> been just like him, man. Mean, you know, go out there and have a ball, and you know, John Witherspoon was my best friend. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, uh, rest in peace, John. Man, yeah, we 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 just had a ball, man. We you look like y'all had a ball. ball. Yeah. Like, I, like, like, it wasn't nothing but a party, man. Now, I don't. I never worked with Ice Cube before, but is he the type of director that just says do what you want? To, like, it give you a script, but it says go what you want, you know, yeah, do what you want. Because it seemed like y'all were just but riffing Cube's on so each other. Cool. You know, you had a director. Cube wasn't really a director. Oh, okay. But he was a man. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right, he right, just right. walked through. You, you know, he Cube, Cube just walked by and said, "Do do your thing, nigga." Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's what he did. You know, you know. <laughs> And your core, your core porked out there. <laughs> he's That's smart, funny. man. Oh no, he's smart. He know what he's doing. He I don't want to blow a game. Right. But that nigga's sharp. Really? That man, let me tell you. Well, he got a three-on-three. I'm gonna tell you a story, okay. man. I probably shouldn't tell. Nigga, tell it, tell it. I hope Q don't get mad. He don't watch this. So I was leaving Atlanta one time. I got on the plane, and I had just started making a little money. So. 
from time to time when I would have a first class ticket. And then an old sister, an old brother, would get on and be headed to the back of the plane. I'd get in my first class seat what? and go sit in the back. Ain't Damn. no difference if you had to pay for one. So I'm on the plane, and a elderly <laughs> sister gets on the plane, mm -hmm. and as she's coming by, I, st I stood up and said, ma'am, sit here in my seat. Give me your ticket. Mm. I go in the back and sit in the back. Okay. And she said, I'm sitting right here next to you. I said, oh. Oh, snap. She Excuse see? me. Uh -huh. I said, good. I sat down 15, 20 minutes into the flight. The lady leans over to me and said, you an entertainer. I said, yeah. She said, my son's an entertainer. I said, oh, that's good. You know, I'm doing the man talking to the old people. <laughs> right, 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 right. I right. said, that's good. That's good, man. I said, well, would I know him? She said, ah, you might. I said, well, what's his name? She said, Shay Shay Jackson. So I said, Shay Shay Jackson. No, I'm not. I said, I don't know. She said, well, they call him Ice Cube. Oh. I said, oh, no. <laughs> and that's who I was flying to meet oh. with, Cube. It was Cube's mama. Wow. And she started telling me the story about how he started. And uh, she told me he was in, Cube was in, in school, in college, to be an architect. I didn't know that. I'm telling you what she told me. And she, he had been done a year and came to her and asked, could he drop out and do, just try to rap? Rap, okay. And he said, give me a year. And if I ain't making it, I go back to school. Because she said that when he would be rapping in Compton and stuff, and his sisters would come home and tell her, Mama, Cube down there rapping. She didn't know what rapping was, right, so she right. thought it meant hitting on the girls. Oh, wow. So she would tell him, you better stop all that rapping. So when he told her, when he told her that uh, he wanted to drop out of architecture mm -hmm. school mm -hmm. and be a rapper, she said, a rapper? How you gonna make some money? You a pimp or something? You right, a pimp? Right, right, right. And then they had to explain to her what rapping was. Wow. And I was going to meet Cube right then. So I think that was before uh, Friday after next. And uh, it's trivia, but there's a scene, a restaurant scene that I do, me, John Witherspoon, some more. And there's a table full of ladies in the restaurant. One of them is Cube's mama. Re rewind that tape. <laughs> rewind that tape. <laughs> and now that I told you, you know, because when she told me, I looked at her and I said, are you sure? I'm Cube's mama. She looked just like I Cube, man. Wow. Just like wow, wow, wow. With the so beard, you never beard know who you're all. talking to, boy. She had a beard and everything. No, no, she didn't uh, have no shit. beard. No. I see that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, no, but I, he's I smart know. brother. Wow, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Now, I'm going to be real. You ain't going to say it. But the second one didn't do as well. The third one was off the chain. That was Ricky Smiley and all that. Yeah. I think because they took it, because you know, we, you can't take a brothers to the suburbs and make a damn comedy. That's the thing. That's the <laughs> that. Just wood niggas. We gotta keep in the hood. I think it changed. Did you um doing that doing that, I, I just feel like you, you got on a you got on a nice ride at that point, man, you know, doing those two movies. That must have really took your finances to another whole 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 nother. Another it big, helped. Big, big, helped. This nigga say it helped. <laughs> Yeah, I see what you drive, brother, okay? <laughs> and I saw what you drove, nigga, okay? Yeah. Drove and drive is two different things right now, okay? I, I can't even afford one of them tires on that car, yeah. that double R, yeah. okay? Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, so it got to the point where, all right, did you have a good time? Um, so unfortunately, hold on. From that franchise, a lot of people left us, man, from that franchise. Who are you, who are you oh, talking about, man? Yvette Wilson. Yvette Wilson. Lawanda Page. Lawanda Page. Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac. AJ. AJ Johnson. Roach that had the dog. Hung the, himself. The in white boy, right? The white dude? The white right, boy yeah. that had the dog. Tiny Lister. Tiny, Witherspoon. John Witherspoon. So when Q was talking to me at John's funeral, basically about having a reunion, I said, hell, ain't nobody left but you and me. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> yeah. Wow, wow. Y'all can do a little short story. Yeah. You know, it, it, it could be about the funeral. It could be about the funeral of all of them. About but you heard it from me. I told you I won, uh, uh, my team won Chris Tucker's. Uh, yeah, yeah, I heard that. I heard that. What they got to do with anything? Huh? What they got to do with anything? Oh, oh, Chris, Chris said, yeah. if they come back to him now, he'll do it. 
Are you talk, are you pulling our leg? No, I'm telling you, you heard it from me. Okay. So Chris Tucker said if Cube comes back to him and asks him to be in part four, he'll do it. That's what he told me uh, yesterday. I'm trying to think of who all, who all left in that damn movie. Phase on could do it. Phase on. You still you. got Phase on. You got mm-hmm. Mike Gabe. You got Cat. Yeah. Oh you yeah, got, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's Big Man wearing his little shirts? Terry. Terry. Wow. Terry big Cruz. Man wearing little shirts, nigga. Come on. Terry Crews whoop that ad now. He'll fuck around, hit you like uh, Will Smith hit Chris Rock and shit. Okay, you be the Chris Rock. You, know? you gonna hear my Terry Crews story, man? Of course I do. Terry Crews was that was a wild. Terry dude. Crews was parking our cars when we did. Uh, Next Friday. What? And Tiny started acting a fool. Director went and got Cube. No. And Cube said, go get that big dude that's parking. Up. No. <laughs> really? That's how you got the part? I'm telling you, I was there, bro. I've yeah, never people, heard him tell a story. People, uh, wow. So, uh, Terry, if you're watching, I'm, I'm reading Teleprompter, man. <laughs> I didn't make that up. <laughs> Pierre, Pierre wrote right, that. Right, right. I did, I did. I, I heard about that story. I want you to say it yourself. I want you to say it. it made it more authentic. <laughs> Damn! So all you and young, the rest is history, boy. The rest of you actors out there parking cars, nigga, you got a chance, nigga. <laughs> Hope somebody go crazy on set and you can replace it. Cause no, no, because it's funny you say that. When people are filming, when the movie is rolling and filming, you mess up or you ain't right, they're getting you out of there quickly. Yeah, well, Tiny was just being Tiny, you know. Yeah, yeah, Tiny yeah, wasn't yeah, studying yeah, that yeah, damn director. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Tiny, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he thought he was a Shakespearean actor in that hood ass movie and shit. Like, man, <laughs> I don't want to say those lines. Yeah, Tiny was my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiny, we, we worked on the wash together, man. That was that was really great. But that was fun, man. I mean, seeing y'all use some more and all. Yeah, y'all just had that chemistry. Y'all actually livened up the movie part two. I'm gonna be honest with you. Y'all was really probably the funniest people in that damn movie. Man, I mean, we just had a ball, man. Yeah, man. And you know, we we were trying to get some uh, funny scenes every day. But really, when you're doing it, because a lot of stuff you shoot out of sequence. Sure. Sure. So you really don't know how it's going to come together and mm-hmm. turn out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, unlike when I was on television every day for that year, now, you can see the sequence of what's... Right, right. Sure, 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 sure. It's but uh, we were just sure. trying to... Be trying funny to in all be, those scenes you could to be. be funny. Yeah. Now, I tell you, you did something, man, I, I've done myself. I respect you for doing... You made your own movie, Tears of a Clown? I uh, made... Yeah. Well, I well, that, I remember that, that one. But yeah. Okay. Three. Yeah. I and you were in it. Executive producer three. Yeah. 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 That, that was. That was. That was. What made you? What made you do that? Just me like and Spy. Was, Spy. Yeah. Tony Spy. Shout out. Right. I remember. Yeah. 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 By the yeah, comedian. You know, Tony used to be a writer. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he went to school to write. Went to Berkeley, I think. A uh, Berkeley? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then Marcus King. You know. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. But that movie, you, 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 you and him wrote it together. Yeah. Well, he, he wrote it, but I was. Producing exactly. and producing. Okay, okay. It's my money, man. Okay, no, yeah. I, I remember that. I, I remember when you made the movie, when you were making it, because Tony, of course, told me and sent me a copy and shit. Yeah, and you turned this down. Yeah, man. I did. And nigga, shit, I don't do nigga movies no more. Low budget ass, black ass <laughs> movies, nigga. Fuck all that. I do the panic room, PS panic room, motherfucker. I get this $35, nigga. Fuck all that. <laughs> shit, I wouldn't call me. I was begging, man. I knew we couldn't afford nigga, you, man. T- today, you don't have to beg. Just I was call, begging, nigga. man. Just call, nigga. <laughs> Just call. And the bag came in reverse because I begged Joe ass to be up on here, nigga. Every time I turn around, you said, I'm popping up, like, nigga. Don't forget to come on my show. Nigga, I know, I know, man, I know. And then he thought it was radio. I was like, shit. But no, um, so, so how'd you, how do you like directing? I mean, producing movies and stuff? Would you do that again? Would you have another one in mind? Uh, I'd like to do it with somebody else's money. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? I'd like to do it. I'd like with somebody else's finances, man. No, I, I, I ain't that the truth. Bro, I'll tell you something. Go, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll tell you what, what? Technology has made it a whole lot easier Easy. now because everything's digital. And you, you know, back then we was throwing away that tape, man. Right, right. And we do so back then, low budget movie. You had to rehearse. Yeah, oh yeah. That's ain't no, we gonna, we gonna, ain't, we ain't have no 14 takes. Right, right, right. You gonna, you gonna get this shit right the first time, <laughs> maybe the second time. Your ass out of here, man. That's funny you say that. I just say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Your ass, I, but I tell you how incredible it is, really, that uh, any of the smaller companies make it black company. Mm-hmm. Because, let's say you gotta, you know, normally it take, I don't know, 30 or 60 days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To make a movie, mm-hmm. you're shooting six or seven hours a day. Mm-hmm. So you take that time, that's 180, 190 hours mm-hmm. of film, and the movie ain't gonna be but two hours long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People don't realize that, right? Yeah. 
So if you got 60 days of doing this $30 million, you got $30 million and you got 60 days, you see, and a script gonna be 60 pages, you can afford to just shoot a page a day. Mm. But when you got $2 million, <laughs> Two men. You got to know your lines like 10 pages at a time, man. So that's why the big budget movies are easy because you're there all day on right. the set, but you may not have a five line. He said two million dollar movies. I made movies for $25,000, my brother. Okay? <laughs> oh, you got me. You got two million. That would have been, 30, that'd have been eight, 90 days, nigga, with that, okay? You'd have been forever. But what, you know, one thing I, I like about you, I can tell you, let me tell you this honestly. I've never seen you fall off. I've seen some comics on the bus, or something ain't working for them. <laughs> or they calling you up, man, can I get $25, nigga? I, I always tell nigga, I can't have no nigga beg for me for under $100. You can't ask me for $34, nigga, <laughs> until you get paid and shit. You know, you got $16, yeah. Friday, nigga, you don't get away from me with that bullshit. But I remember everywhere I've been at, you've always had a, just, just the richness of you. I came to your house one time in the Hollywood Hills. This dude had like a, I don't remember, nine bedroom house, a big ass house. It was just me and this nigga together, like we're doing a seance. I said, like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. One night, it was just, he, he was lonely. He's like, nigga, can you stay a little longer? I got plenty of room to stay in. They like, know, but you had that big ass house. I was like, you ain't like Sunshine, huh? man. Uh -huh. Earthquake, Earthquake, when he was going through his little thing right. with his wife. Stay with you? I said, hey, player, don't, don't do nothing crazy, <laughs> right, man. Because right. he was talking vibes. I said, no, 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 dog. No. Just, just come on over here and cool off. Hey, that nigga stayed with me about four months, man. Hell no. I can see that. You had enough rooms, nigga. I'm said. on the road. I come back. He's still there. Hey, yeah, uh, his little, you know what you call right, him. Right, right, right. He came through there, yeah. Man, he they sitting room. around the pool. I'm about, you just walk in somebody's house. I've been in my house. <laughs> <laughs> the whole quick right. You just walk in somebody's house. house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, somebody being me, man. It's okay. You, 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 I didn't sit though. around my pool drinking my wine, man. Mm, man, every time. But that's my boy, boy. He oh, stayed no, with me no, about no, three, no. four months, man. I love it. I love it, man. Um, no, that, that was that. You deserve it. You deserve it, man. You deserve it. Um, the Boondocks, one of my favorite shows of all. Yeah. Time. I wish they would have called me. That was my. Probably, that's probably my top five favorite shows of all time. Well, white folks were telling me how to pronounce nigga. Oh damn. What? I got them stories, boy. Hold up, hold up, back that up. They were telling you how to pronounce. But wasn't Aaron Magruder wasn't around? The little Asian dudes and shit was around? No, Who? Aaron wasn't around. Oh, so once Aaron writes it, it's up to them. Them, 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 crack, them white folks get in and tell you, we need the ER, nigga. Okay? Yeah, I wasn't saying it right. How was you saying it? I, nigga, I don't even know. I, really? <laughs> okay, then how do they want saying you to say like it? Saying it like I said, I don't know. <laughs> then how do they want you to say it? Yeah, they want me to do something with that ER or something. I'm like, you got to be shitting me. Wow. wow. But I had fun with that too, man. That, man, that was a, that man. How, how'd you get the show? How'd you even get They just saw uh, you? They called me from somewhere, man. What? They just called me from somewhere. Right, right, right. I, I mean, that made you me. You killed too. it, too. I called information one time. You know, I did a few infomercials in California. I didn't know that. Because of my voice, supposedly. Okay. No, no, and they would all be like, you from the south? Yeah, south side of Chicago. Okay. But I called information one time and the operator just started laughing. I said, something funny? She said, you sound like this this comic is named D.C. Kirk. Ooh. This information. And I said, that's me. She like, look, man, what number you want? Come on, come on. <laughs> Right. I spent five minutes trying to convince that woman. I said, no, 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 no. I'm telling you. Right, it's me. That's me. Are you, is, this, is this really information? She said, yeah. I said, that's, 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 that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I, that's funny. I worked at a shuttle place. It was called a primetime shuttle. When I first moved to L.A., they used to have a show to pick you up and take you to the airport. You know, come yeah. to your house, pick you up, and take you to the airport. And I remember one time I, uh, I, I heard his voice, and this guy was talking. I was like, I think I know what this is. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like two months into L.A. I said, what's your name? He said, A. Fargus. <laughs> is that right? You know what that was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, huggy, I didn't want to say huggy, but huggy man from Starsky and Hutch. I was, yeah. But, yeah is that I, right? I could believe it. I was like a celebrity. Like, oh, I'm talking to the fucking Aunt Huggy Bear. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, he's my A. Fargus. Yeah, is I, that I, right? Nigga, you Huggy Bear, nigga. You from Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> I couldn't believe So, yeah, the voices, yeah, yeah. People say I have a distinct voice. I, I don't think I do, but whatever. I, 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 I would know your voice. Yeah, because some people don't know my name. They're like, I know that voice. I know who it was you. I was like, okay, well, I have my voice and stuff. I don't know. Um, let, let me ask you something. This is something new in the news came up recently. 
Your boy Chris Rock turned out the Oscars. He said he didn't want to do the Oscars now. He said, Don't that's blame me. He said, damn. He said, but then he said he didn't want to go back to the scene of the crime. <laughs> like Nicole Simpson, like going back to the scene of a crime. That's what, I think that was a little extra. You said you wouldn't do it. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you go back on the show? Why wouldn't you? The fuck? I, I tell you what, if I were Chris Rock. Right. Well, first place, big ups to him for how he handled it. Okay. Grace. Class. Right, yeah, yeah. Dignity. Yes. And I ain't got none of that shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Had to but be. But they asked me in an interview the other day, what would you do, DC? Will Smith ain't slapping me. Oh, no. He not slapping me. Mm-hmm. Or Monique. Monique slapping you or he slapping Monique? He not slapping Monique. That, oh, shit. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> no, you know, uh, right, right. Chris Rock. Man, Chris Rock funny, but you know, right. he's a very small guy. Right, 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 right. And that's a nice way to put it. Yeah. He's not a fighter. You know, he's a comedian, so he don't yeah, want to fight. He's not that. Yeah, yeah, he ain't with but. but no, I wouldn't go back because, I mean, to the question you asked me, I don't think that this security stepped up. Let me tell you this, man. And I ain't just selling with tickets. Okay. Had I been there, mm-hmm. and I ain't no security, mm-hmm. but I would have done something. If you'd been in the audience, you mean? Yes. And you would, okay, now, okay, he goes up, he slaps Chris Rock. Mm-hmm. He comes back. Where DC is doing what now? Oh, I'm, I'm, I don't think he would have. Well, you know, you didn't know he was gonna slap him though. You can't, you ain't gonna just jump on him. You ain't know he was gonna slap. Him. No one knew he was I gonna know, slap Chris. Not, not when he came up, right? right? And then, of course, when he's coming up there, there's this debate about is it a skit or something. Well, you don't know that. But after it happened, right? I, you know, and then if Chris had reacted differently, maybe. I, but I think security there should have done something. But I think the the quarry they had was. Here's a black man just slapped another black man, and they didn't know how to handle it. They didn't know. They didn't know what to do. Right. They didn't know what. To do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I agree with that. I agree. They didn't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Again, again, a lot of people talking shit. Hindsight. What out it? Did out it? What out it? But when he walked up to him, I didn't know he was gonna slap him. No, I actually I didn't see think Chris it. Did. Yeah. Exactly. Chris didn't know either. That's why Chris was probably shocked. What the fuck? What the yeah, fuck? Well, you doing? Where you going? Where and the nigga turned around quick. And then he slapped him, stood there, and looked at the nigga. He turned around and left and shit. Now I didn't like the whole soup. Then they cleaned. He cleaned the shit up after he slapped him. He walked back that motherfucker like this. All oh, like, hold on. Now that part we're gonna have a problem. You hit me like that, and he gonna walk away. I got to do, uh, you know. But I like the way Chris. Now that I seen Chris, I like the way he handled it. I, like I, I mean, I, I, I like the way he handled it. I'm just telling you, man. What? You the fuck the nigga up there wrestling and tussling and this shit on stage? We proud, the whole of, we proud of Chris, but y'all have been ashamed of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, I ain't claiming to be right, bad. Right, 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 right. Come been. on, man. But y'all have been ashamed of me. What about the And I know ass? Will. I like Will. I know Chris. I know both of them. Right. I don't know Jada. Ashamed of him. But you know, I you were gonna on. set us back a hundred years. Yo, y'all been shaming me. Y'all been come on, DC. That's enough now. You, you <laughs> now that's enough. Really. But you know, come on, right. man. About a joke about alopecia. Right. That was, yeah. You got it. Right. Oh, nigga, hold on, nigga. God damn. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> you know what bothers me? Hold on. She got it. Okay. Don't laugh. <laughs> okay. You okay, know what everybody. bothers me about? <laughs> You know what bothers me about people being offended by jokes and shit? Right. Just right. like mm-hmm. handicapped people right. gave me. Uh, you tell a joke about regular people and handicapped people laugh. So what the hell make you special? That's true. Well, the Olympics. Gay people laugh at straight people joke. Yeah. So what the hell make you so we can't laugh at you? Who, who the hell are you supposed to be? Right, right, right. You know what I mean? That's true. That's a good point. What I look like and you making a joke about people that are all black. Really what nigga. What I look like being a really nigga, Really nigga. Really nigga. Really <laughs> nigga. I caught that. Y'all ain't catch that. That bullshit. No different than me doing a gay joke. Oh, you know, you know, comics be getting my joke, You know man. what I'm saying? I mean, you can, don't be offended about a gay joke. I, I ain't no joke for this, I? Okay? The hell you going on, okay? <laughs> no, all no. this defensive, <laughs> all this defensive stuff, though, man. Right. I, don't, I don't get it, bro. Right, right, right. It's a little long. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking that, I feel like comics are being under attack, man. You know what I'm yes. saying? Because a good example, do you think, uh, what's some Ari Spears and Lizzo? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I can we joke? Well, um, Ari, my boy. Okay. But you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be careful how you say. Oh, man. Not on, just man. because it's a council culture. Yeah, that's one. And then, but you gotta consider all the circumstances. You know. 
What is the circumstances with her? She flaunts it. I'm not saying he's right for doing it, whatever, but she does put herself out there. She's at the, the Laker game with her thong on, stuck in her hands in front of everybody. Come on, man. I thought man. that was ridiculous. Okay. But she's being her. That's what the girl's going to say. She's living in her moment, her body. Yeah. But <laughs> okay. what that you talking about cosmetically, that could be her choice. But health-wise, it could, it's... it's it's not healthy. I, there was a woman called in the radio day for yesterday, I think it was. I was listening, they were talking about it. And she said uh, she weighed 350 pounds. Mm. And she said her doctor told her she is totally healthy. Now, uh, uh, Dr. J was at the <laughs> golf tournament that. yesterday. <laughs> He wouldn't have told us she was totally him. <laughs> Damn. I'm not saying she's <laughs> unattractive. Right, right. right. Uh, you know, this old not unattractive. But just health-wise, I'm not talking about cosmetically, right. you know. Right. Health-wise, you know. But, you know, who, who's to say? But the women were defended by saying, like, like you said, somebody said, just because you're big don't mean you're unhealthy, just because you're slim don't mean you're healthy. So it don't mean you're unhealthy, but it means you're overweight. Okay, but what's wrong with but overweight? That, some people like chubby chasers. I'm overweight, so what's Yeah, overweight? yeah, so. You know. But yeah. I think, uh, let me put it another way. Okay. I think Aries, I think he was a little harsh. Okay. Okay. He was a little harsh. The shit emoji joke and stuff, the mashed potatoes. You know, he trying to be funny a little too much or? But I'm in defense of Aries Spears. Aries Spears is from the school of Paul Mooney, man. There you go. Uh-huh. And Paul Mooney was the offensive artist of all time. Damn. The most offensive. I've gone to shows with Paul Mooney and, you know, club, four, five hundred people. And watch him clear the oh, room on, on, yeah. and be proud. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm talking about Paul. Be proud of his ass. Yeah. And laughing his ass off. Yeah. I'm talking about empty the room, man. You no, know, I used to work at the comedy store back in the day. He, I seen him empty the comedy right. store. And they have three rooms. He used to do the original room, the middle one. They have two fifty. And he used to have to go last. Mitzi used to put him on. Mitzi show who owned the club. Yeah. Put him on last. Yeah. You have 185 people sitting there. You know, midnight. Yeah. And I saw 20 comedians. Mm. Shit about. 15 minutes in the gang, like toast popping up. Nigga. Bleep, 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 bleep. No, he, he be walking. And I loved it. I loved every bit of it. I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I stayed there and watched nigga, eating popcorn. Talk about the white folks. Talk about them. Talk, tell, keep, it, keep it real, Paul. Keep it real. He talked about white folks bad. And you know crazy about Paul, too? I noticed. What, he married to a white woman? Uh, ooh. You know, so funny. He, te- he, te- he teased me by saying I'm mixed. I'm like, nigga, them two light skinned kids you got ain't come from no black woman. Okay, no, no, nigga. Paul's wife was great. Uh, I can believe that. I can, yeah, I can believe that. But a lot of people, famous people, would watch him, but they would hide in the corners to watch him because they didn't want to be associated with watching Paul yeah. Modi. At the comedy store, you see Eddie yeah. Murphy. I ain't going to say he was embarrassed, but other people would be popping up in the corners like, oh, ain't that so and so? Everybody like, nigga, <laughs> hide behind menus and shit. <laughs> and he, Paul was, Modi. he was funny, man. I used to tell him. But I, some of the stuff, but you know, like with regards to this. Discretion. Uh, he did an award show. Paul, Paul was my man, man. Right. Okay. George Wallace, who was here, Paul Mooney, John Witherspoon were right. most free with information to me. Mm. And uh, Paul was my man, but uh, he did an award show one time. And Don't tell me, I know. Tracy Rouse was Ooh. there. And he lit into Diana Rouse. And Tracy, I mean, she just got, she got hysterical, you know. And cried. I think he left the theater and she left. Cried yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He carried yeah. out, escorted out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he talked about. I heard one time, he he was he did a show in L.A. <laughs> O.J.'s was on the show or something. They were doing a fundraiser for Tom Bradley. He, he was a mayor running for mayor or whatever. Or yeah, mayor, whatever. Bradley, yeah. And he didn't know the fundraiser for him. That's what I've heard the story. He just got thrown in the show. He, he flew in and like, can you, is somebody missing? Can you come on, when you get on? He didn't know the fundraiser was getting paid. <laughs> He saw a nigga in the front row, his name was Tom Bryce, and they go, Uncle Tom Bradley, nigga. So oh, yeah. Uncle Tom in front of everybody. <laughs> I said, you yeah, you did to the man who they doing his thing for, for oh, him. Man. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I heard, you know, that he didn't know. But speaking of being bold, I know, as I've watched you, you know, you know, you, do you think you've gotten bolder in your older age, like you just don't give two fucks no more when you're on stage? Because I heard you say some funny shit. You talked about Monique the other night, nigga, that was hilarious. Uh, well, yeah, but I wouldn't. I, I, you talked about, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kiss Rock and Slap. You said some shit. You talked about, what's your boy's name? Uh, our boy, Michael Collier. Come on now. What, what, <laughs> I did you know? my boy. That boy like brother to me, man. So I feel like as you got older, you don't get, you get, you think I don't talk, I don't talk, I don't, uh, I talk about, I talk about 
my brother and sister in love, man, not in news. Oh, like, yeah, we know that, but you're still going. You're digging deep, man. You used to be nice. You used to have little tap dance shoes on a little bit up there. I saw a couple times. <laughs> you, weren't, you, weren't trying to be, you were funny. You weren't trying to do too much. You know what I'm saying? There's but, still some stuff that I, <laughs> that I won't say. Right. Well, really? Huh? There's really some material you wouldn't go into? Yeah, I'm sure there is. I can't think of it. But oh, I'm right, sure right, right, right. I'm sure there is. No, yeah, there's some. There's, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think what I, I would do. I got some. I got some class, man. Right. Well, yeah, you, you're definitely a classy gentleman, <laughs> but just because, yeah. That's funny you say. I'm trying to think of a material I wouldn't go into. Now you talked about him talking about uh, Tom and him. I, I mean, you know, I do some people-oriented comedy, but uh, some things I say about some people, I wouldn't say it if they were there. Muhammad Ali. <laughs> nigga, I heard that. I heard that. I'm telling you, I hear the laughs and the groans, nigga. <laughs> nigga. It was up and down in that room, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that boy. That boy don't give a fuck no more. He gets no fucks. You must ain't got a TV show, nigga. That's what it is. Ain't no, ain't no sponsors. Okay, you sponsor hey, free, brand free, and TV free, nigga. You a free nigga. You don't give a fuck no more. Come see DC Curry live and see what he won't talk about. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the hell you won't talk about. I was like, hell no. White folks in there cringing, everybody cringing, even niggas cringing. Around. Damn, man. But it was hilarious, man. It was, it, it was, it was just hilarious, man. It was hilarious. Oh, man, man. you vet. You know, you, 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 you know, you talking like you an angel too. You know, no, you, no, you no. know, you out there. People. No, of course I am. I, I love it. I love being bold and saying what I want to say. Cause you know what? I don't say it maliciously. We don't. I'm not doing malicious. That's material. weird. I couldn't think of. Yeah. Her, boy, you, maybe you could play yeah, golf. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, ma maliciously. I, I don't do it maliciously, man. Um, but th t today, I feel like even if it's not malicious, if it's a little tweaky, -tweak, people get offended so easily. Yeah. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah. You know what's funny? One of the greatest sets I think uh, was with uh, Eddie Murphy in Delirious. The Delirious, remember the, with red yeah. out the red outfit? Yeah, red, the, red yeah, leather. Red right? leather, right? Red yeah. leather outfit. One of the greatest sets. The thing was funny. All yeah. that stuff was in there. But he said, F in there. Yeah. Woo-wee! Yeah. We'll say the F-bomb. I'm going to beat this out. Yeah, and, the F-bomb. Uh, but we couldn't say it today. And I'm not... No, you can't say that. Now. But you can't say a lot of stuff no more. You can't... Midget. Ooh. I say midget. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, yeah. You, 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 won't, you won't say, say on TV. Like, you can't say... No, nah, you can't say Right. You know what I'm saying? You can't say, like, it midget. Right. Oh, damn. That's double whammy right there. Damn. Damn, that's too much. That's too, way too much. But you can say nigga. I know that's right. Ain't so that the truth? So are the midgets? You can't say retarded. See, and that's so it's so hypocritical because you can't to to say you can't say retarded, which does not mean mentally retarded. So who who what the hell the mentally retarded people got a got a claim to the word retarded? Hell no. You could be economically retarded. Mm. You you could be racially retarded. That just means slow at a disadvantage. And I who said mentally retarded? You just say retarded, and all the mentally retarded jump up. Like they own the word retarded. You don't own the word retarded. You could be socially retarded, economically retarded. You could, you have, could be cosmetically you retarded. You could have a suit that's fire retarded. That's fire retarded. You could. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wear a suit that's you could fire be retarded. Style, stylishly <laughs> retarded. Right, 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 right. But they gonna buy the word retarded. Wow. Well, yeah, I, I'm just afraid that it's, you know, I'm going I'm to be checking out here 20, 30 years, hopefully. It, it, it's going, it, 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 it's too much. These young kids are winning on the social media, stopping us from doing certain things, saying stuff. And I think, man, at the end of the day, just let a comic do what he wants to do. If you don't like it, enjoy it, move off, man. Just don't watch and, it. And, hey, you know, when they asked me the other day about uh, what my man that was on uh, the show, he got me in Hollywood and he went on the nigger rant. Nigga, this, nigga, Michael this. Frank, uh, Frank, Frank, something. No, from Seinfeld. Off Seinfeld. Yeah, show. Frank. What's his name? Mike. No, it wasn't. It wasn't Michael What's his Frank. Name? Mike something. On the Seinfeld show, and he got up in the laugh factory right. and said, "Nigga, this and nigga." The problem I had with that, I ain't had no problem with the man saying it, but when your intent is to inflict, pain, right, right, then we got a problem. Right. But if you trying to be funny. And even if it ain't funny, if your intention is to be funny, then I ain't got no problem with bad ass Joe. I don't, get, I don't really don't give a shit what you say. But he had got heckled by some brothers and sisters that night. Right, right. So right. he had abandoned his intentions to be funny. When he said nigga, he was trying to inflict pain. Right. And 
then all, all bets are off. But if you just up there, white comic up there, and he say nigga, and it's supposed to be funny, and it ain't funny, it just ain't funny. But if he's trying to be funny, right. but if he calls himself inflicting some pain, he called himself retaliating against his heck. Right, sure. So he wasn't trying to be funny when he right. was saying nigga. He knew that that could get through right. to him. He was trying to inflict some pain. So right. that's the problem I had with that. He ain't no problem with it. Well, well then I'll tell you what, then. Then you'd have to almost side with that with Ari Spears wasn't really, he was, he was trying to flick pain more to be fun, than funny. Would you agree with that? I think he was, I think it came off, no matter how he was trying, I think it came off as malicious. Malicious and not funny. Yeah. I wonder if I could get away with a funny fat joke, you know, about a celebrity. Hey, man, if, if, if Ari says, uh, Lizzo, beautiful girl, woo, she be back up off them potatoes. Oh, <laughs> That's not light. Right. You know, a big right. ass needs to Right, know, right, I right, mean, right, it's just, you right. know, some of it is, uh, it's an old adage, but some of it ain't what you say is you're right. how you say it. You you're know. right, you're right. All right, let me, as I'm rolling this up, on your epitaph, what, what do that? you want? What is epitaph? Nigga, you play golf? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, nigga, okay. Golf. <laughs> 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 I'm teaching you today, nigga. Shit, I don't want to hear shit. You and George Washington sit down and take a class with me. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I know about okay, my epitaph. epitaph. Uh, actually, lasagna is my favorite. Really? Uh, epitaph? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, it says, here lies Don D.C. Curry. He what? What did, what did it say? Uh... He knew Pierre. That's a good one right there, brother. That's shit, shit, yeah. Ain't many people gonna give a damn about it or know who I am. They gonna put, put the word who behind it, motherfucker. He knew Pierre. Who? He's very sorry Pierre passed away years before. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> he was a dirty motherfucker. He was such a, that's fine. Damn, you know, fuck this, que fuck this question and shit, nigga. Fuck out of here with this question. You know what, man? I was uh, having a conversation the other day. He laid him for And, uh. <laughs> and the issue was, you know, your legacy, you right. know, all you can say. I'm really not concerned with that. So I don't give a shit what it said. Damn. Epitaph. All that work you done did. I try to help people while I'm here. And when I'm gone, you know, I, I really could give a shit what you say. Damn. Damn. I really could. I mean, I'm not concerned with my legacy. I'm not. Right. I, just, I just try to live, you know, I try right. to live and, and do what I think is uh, right and reasonable. Right. And uh, and it is what it is, you know. But I, I'm not doing nothing trying to uh, solidify right, my right. legacy. I, I don't give a shit what right. you say after I'm gone. And that's why I don't talk about people's character and stuff really. Right. After they did, they ain't here to defend themselves. Mm. I wouldn't give a shit what you say. All right, well, I got some shit to say. I know I you even, do, man. Let you go before me, <laughs> nigga. Okay, I got some. Well, look, we do this thing called spin the wheel up here, man. This is when we have our guest spin the wheel. And it has, it has a few things on. I'm gonna run by for those who don't know what it is. It may, um, we do a celebrity crush call. That means you take your cell phone and you call a celebrity person you have that you have a crush on. It could be he or she. We, we, we binary up here. We're good here on the show. So, and you call, you're trying to get some booty, uh, you know, <laughs> again, he or she, <laughs> you're your crazy ass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Shit. Uh, you, you got one minute to see what your macking game is to get them over to your house or whatever. Something you want to get off your chest. If you got something on your chest you want to get off. Who you trade places with and why? Who you, who, who this world you trade places with and why? Give me a real secret if it falls on that. There's a secret about it. There's something about DC Curry we don't know about. I'm, I'm quite sure. Well, How you ain't no secret no more if I tell it. Oh, oh, oh well, there it is. That's right. If we tell it here. This, we don't need to be a forever secret, nigga. This is, it stops here. <laughs> like your virginity, nigga, okay? I mean, <laughs> talk, about, talk about how you lost that, like, you know, back in, I don't know what year, they could have learned about 16, 1965, probably. Um, Those appear to be some very intrusive uh, <laughs> subjects right, right there. <laughs> Nigga, you know, you do play golf. <laughs> you keep going, you keep going back and forth. Something you want to get off your chest and why? And what's the biggest lie you ever told? 
You can tell me any of them stories you just told me again. Just repeat them shit you just did in this interview. Okay? <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, spin this sucker and see where it fall at, man. Let's see what these. Give him a drum roll, y'all. Give DC a drum roll, y'all. Come on, spin that sucker and see what it come out to, brother. Ah! Ah! Oh, fuck it, spin again. Spin again. All right, one more spin. Spin again. If it spins again, we're going to pick one for your ass. Spin again? Yeah, man. I don't know why I said spin again, man. Can you do that? Can you muscle up that much? No. Why would you write that on it? That's funny. We cut all this out, nigga. We cut all, we cut all this out. The, big, oh, the biggest lie you ever told. All right, so think about that. The biggest lie in your whole life that you ever told. Did I tell you uh, All right. how much I appreciate you having me on and so forth? No, you haven't told that lie. You haven't told that. Nigga, there's some time. <laughs> there were some times you told some female out there that you was, you was Mike Tyson. Oh, no, I don't like Mike Tyson. No, you just. Damn, Mike Tyson. There you go. Yeah, you bit the bitch in the ear. Okay. Mike, my man. Yeah, yeah. I'm quite sure there was something, some honey, some situation. Mike Tyson, uh, you funny, DT, you funny. <laughs> All right now. All right now, Mike. Watch now, Mike. Watch the show now. I said, Ote, Ote. Oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah, is there, is there a lie you think might have told, man? You know, on the set know. of Grace Under Fire. Yeah, I've told a lot of lies. Oh damn. <laughs> Pick one I, I've told a lot of lies, you okay. know, but uh, I have used some, uh, you know, I, uh, back in the day, uh, white people have a little problem differentiating between me and the Donna Eugene Curry, who was a middleweight champ. Right, right. Well, I was eating steak everywhere I went. Using his name is like you were him. I, that was my name. <laughs> wow, okay. So okay. when I showed my credit card, they like, that's him. You dumb boy, I tell you. There you go. You just was built differently. I put, put yeah. my chest and go. I don't know, uh, but the greatest lie I've ever, I, I don't know. I've told a lot of lies, man. I, I don't know. I, I've, I've told a lot of lies. You, you, you said a lot, you told a lot of them? Back in the day, you know, I, 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 I'm not a liar now, but back in the day, I, I told a lot of lies. A lot of them? Yeah. Biggest uh, lie. A whole bunch? Biggest lie. I told some big ones, too. <laughs> Take one all right, now. all right. So before I let you go out here, we asked the audience, for some questions to ask Don D.C. Curry. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, they know you and they love you. So uh, let's get a question here. Here's one. Did you ever have someone steal your joke, and how did you handle it if it did? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, what they you stole do? my joke. More back in the day than now, because that's in the case with you. Mm -hmm. After you get after you get a certain amount of years under you, you really... Uh, your personality takes over. Okay. And it's hard for a person to duplicate your personality. They can't steal it. I've seen guys try to tell some stuff that I told in this personal experience and they can't, they can't uh, duplicate it. I've, I've had guys open for me during the course of the week and, and the yeah, second oh, and third show, oh, man, yeah. they be all over. Yeah. They play yeah. You can't do that, but uh So you just gonna tell them look, you know, no. <laughs> no, bro, you're not gonna do that. Or you, yeah, yeah, I check them. I okay. mean I check them. Not only that, and I'm telling you something that's missing now with the young comics, they don't have the camaraderie. First place they didn't put in the sweat equity like we put in back in the day. Right. And they right. don't have the camaraderie that we had. Back in the day, if I heard somebody, if you weren't there, I hear somebody do, do your stuff. Come on now. I, I, I check. Come on now. I mean, we would, we would check the young cats doing each other stuff, even if the person wasn't there. They're gone with that bullshit, yep, man. Yep. Or well, ask them to eat. Right, right, right. And right. then some stuff is, is uh, you know, some stuff is just general. Right. You know comics going to think of it. Right. But you know when you got your signature on something. You know what I mean? Oh, sure, sure, sure. You know, sure. you know when you got your signature on. How many know. times comics come to you like after you got the show? Yo, you got a joke like that. I thought a joke like that too. Right, right, I, right, right, I never right, done it before. Right, right, but right. nigga, too late now. Right. Oh, you ain't never done it. You should have done it before, I, before you saw me do it. Oh, well, I got a joke like that too. Yeah. And some stuff, you know, <laughs> some stuff is generic. The right. comics say, but you know when your signature is on something, right? Man, and right. Uh, and you can tell a lot of times when a guy. When a rookie is, he'll say something 
is just it, he he all he doing is dumb shit right. riding on the elevator. Right, shit. right, right. Then he say something clever, and you be like, "That Pierre, now yeah, you yeah, ain't yeah. thought of that. Right. You, you ain't, you right. ain't, you ain't thought, you ain't thought of that." Right, right. But you know, yeah, it, it, you know it happens. You know they say it's. Flattery, it, it no, don't no, flatter me. No, no, you know, no, no. no. And, you know, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very. I joke about it, but I'm very sensitive about comedy in my act. You know, to, to go, I don't like people who bring me up on stage if it's not like no, no light, the microphone ain't right. Like this is serious, man. This is my yeah. career, crap. You are gonna treat me correctly? I remember one time I, I booked you for a show in Arizona and I got your contract, and it said something that I was like, really? But it made I understand that you said I need a professional lighting, lighting and professional. Sound and I was like, of course, but no, not of course. A lot of times people don't have those things, so it's crazy that you in your writer you got to put that in your writer, a real microphone, a real sound system, and some lights, nigga. Like you see, you know what I'm saying? What's next? A stage two, nigga? You gotta have a stage, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and people like I didn't realize that when I first got. I was like, really? But then as I you know started doing more work, I was like, yeah, I do shows sometimes. They'd be like like a, like a hotel ballroom. And you What's know, the spotlight, motherfucker? You can say that's about me, but that's about the people. The people pay money, man. Yeah, yeah. The people pay money, and yeah. then you ain't you not gonna have the lightning right. You're not gonna have the mic right. So of course, with you, you know, I wouldn't be worried about. Right, right, right. Oh, but, no, uh, right, but right. you know, you. particularly back then, you know, I do some rooms where the people they didn't give a damn man. They got the people in there. They got the money, and you know, the hell with this shit. Right, 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 right. I feel you. Okay. Another one. Someone said that. He said you said this. I shared a story how how Steve Harvey stopped rocking with me. How well do you know Steve? And what do you think Steve represents for the comedy game? You know Steve rock, you ain't rocking like that no more? They said I said that. That's what I said. This is, I shared a story how Steve Harvey stopped rocking with me. Then somebody else picked it up. Is that, did you never share a story like that? Are you and Steve Harvey good friends? Y'all still rocking with each other? We cool. I haven't seen y'all perform together. I ain't seen you and him perform together either. We don't rock together no more. The nigga fired me from a show. Well, he ain't fired me from a show. Rushon did. Rushon McDonald. Donald. And maybe it wasn't Steve, maybe it was Rushon. this. Woo, wasn't it true? <laughs> you know he got a studio in Atlanta now. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, God bless him. I ain't got no problem with Steve, man. Y'all good now? That I, that I know of, you know. Okay. We had a little, over the years, we've had a couple of little run-ins. But, you know, the brother, I'm, I'm proud of the brother. I respect that. Is it because your style was similar? Made. Was it because y'all got similar you know, style? You know, I've heard that, man. Uh, we are similar ages. Right, sure. Some experience. You know, be clean. Some folk have compared our cadence. Yes. Over the years. Uh, I ain't never really had a problem with uh, other than uh hear this. I'm I'm uh you can't hardly offend me, man. Mm. And Steve is and I you know, I say this to him, you know, he's he has an has always been very sensitive. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So, about 20 years ago. <laughs> what you stupid? What's wrong with you, man? How you gonna start off laughing, nigga? Eh? It's a sensitive moment. We quiet here now. Cause you're making me see stuff going. Now he gonna be mad at me now. Mm -hmm. It's 20 years ago. I'm proud of the man, man. Steve probably big now, or close to. Oh, it's okay. 20 years ago, we were in Memphis. Me, Penny Hardaway, we were in a, in a we were doing a show, and Penny Hardaway was in there, Boomerang. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> oh, I probably shit. shouldn't say this, boy. It's me. We were in the dressing room. The dressing room had a low ceiling. The green room had a low ceiling. Okay. And it had a ceiling fan. Oh, don't you dare. Steve was standing on the ceiling fan. Not 20 years ago. And I said, in my young stupidity, Okay. Steve, you better get out from that ceiling fan for your toothpick get caught up in that thing. <laughs> Why did you say that? And Steve did not speak to me for about three years. Oh, oh. Sensitive. Yeah, he's always been very sensitive. Man, very funny. Steve is funny to me, man. Yes, he, he, he is. But, and so was you at that time. But damn, yeah. 
Now, you take it and flip it over. I've heard he said some things about me in my absence. The shit was funny. It was, right. it was hilarious to me, you know. I had called back in the day and, uh, you know, he came out. I think Quake told him I had, you know, a bottle of rose way back in the day. Right, right, sure. He came out and he got in and then he went up and talked about, you know, I had some. <laughs> the radio. Right, right, See, right. I bought a rose, but I had this radio put in there. This, this, uh, uh, aftermarket. Yeah, the market. It wasn't even that. a CD. CDs were not then. It was a cassette. Cassette player, but it had all these different color lights on it. Right, right. Not the Rolls Royce. So he like, oh, you get old nigga. You get old nigga. Got all this drinking lights. That's all he had to say about my. Right, 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 right. So but, I mean, he's, you know, but Steve is. I'm, I'm proud of the brother. No, I'm not, not. We all are, but fuck that. That nigga just took that helmet off and shit. Okay. <laughs> no, he had to, man. It come to a point. God bless Steve. Now that's uh, malicious. Oh, ain't that about a bitch? <laughs> tell a nigga, tell me how to get off of the fucking dog. No, I love Steve Harvey. I'm a, I'm a good friend of yeah, Steve Harvey. Listen, I'm he's amazed. He's a great comedian. I'm amazed at what he's, what he's been uh, able yeah, to pull uh, off. Exactly. And he's, that's he's a, very funny, he, but he, yes, he's, 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 a, he's a relationship guru. Well, yeah, but he's been to a lot. No, people people try to diss him, but anybody who's been divorced and married and been divorced, that's the one you got to listen to because they'll tell you what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to listen to a nigga went through some shit? Yeah, he's been through some. Yes, he has. So he's the right person to write that book. Yeah, and I ain't, I ain't mad. I, I love Steve Harvey. You man. still shouldn't have said no damn ceiling fan and toupee <laughs> shit, nigga. Don't do that, man. The nigga was clean. I was looking out for a man's safety, man, because really? I don't know how attached it was to his head. <laughs> oh. And if he got caught up in there and sucked his old body yeah. up to that ceiling fan, that wouldn't have been good. That would have been a bad look right there. But come on, man. But Steve <laughs> should be funny about it. We a comedian. He know how we are. We roll. We laugh. We talk about people. But I guess yeah. back then he was a little more sensitive. Yeah, well, alopecia wasn't even out back then. Hell no, <laughs> my man. So now, you know. To be honest with you, I didn't know it wasn't real. Did you know it wasn't real? I didn't know it was real till the end. What, the uh... The hair, the hair piece, whatever, right? The hair piece he had on. That shit was clean, brother. Oh, I knew. You you knew. <laughs> yeah. Well, you must have been close up to him a lot. Because I saw, yeah. you know, any nigga wear a lot of hats a lot of times, maybe. Well, he went through that stage. I went through that stage myself yeah. before I went on and gave up the ghost. You're right. The, the, what you called the gave up the what? The ghost. What's the ghost? That fake shit you believe when you still think ain't nobody <laughs> tell you going bald. <laughs> yeah, I, I did some shit, yeah. I had yeah, this yeah. thing. <laughs> then I went to that black guy. Right. <laughs> and they got some fuzzy shit in Hollywood. People you don't know about, they right, right. spread on there, but yeah. come out like, huh? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. man, wherever I sat, if I sat here, when I got up, you could see DC's head hell right here. No. Hell no. The pillow, all my pillows was black. You gonna stay sweating and shit, uh, little, no, little, little run down like, like Juliana. Yeah, hell, like no. Juliana. Hell, hell no. So I went through that, right. and then finally I just gave up, bro. Just said fuck it. It is yeah. what it is. But yeah, but yeah. But I'm glad Steve gave up. Maybe his confidence felt better. But Steve, man, give it. Gotta give him credit, man. The boy is. You phenomenal. got to give it up. To I mean, he. I mean, he got so many streams of income, and he's. And let me tell you, bro, he is the greatest host of Family Feud. Fuck it, I'll say. Even yeah, Richard Dawson. I got, I got everybody in my family watch that damn show, man. I go to my aunt and uncle house, they 80, 60, you know, 80, 79 and 80, 80. He's rolling, man. Man, everybody over 60 loves Steve Harvey. You got that. You got bacon company. What? what, what? You ain't even bought no Steve Harvey bacon. Oh, yeah, yeah, Steve, bacon, bacon, yeah, 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 bacon, yeah. He got steel company. God damn. Joke stealing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what you talking about? No, oh, fuck, I'm just joking. No, I'm just joking. I heard, yeah. now. Okay. I heard. Okay. But I heard from a very reliable source. Yeah, I'm not, come on. All the Walmarts in the United States Don't buy you. their steel shelving from Steve Harvey. Oh. I hope it is true, man. That boy, make that money, Steve Harvey. Get make that money. that money, Steve. Get that money, Steve. He got his hand on everything. <laughs> he, he wrote it, man. I'm yeah, proud, man, I'm man. Proud. But that, well, well, I would say if you could reverse time, would you take that joke back? Which one? Nigga, the ceiling fan one. Oh, oh, from in that room? Yeah. Oh, no. you say what? Well, right, well, I wasn't being malicious when I said Right. It. Come on, man. I talked about this at the, at the award show. I didn't hear that part. No, no, I didn't hear that. With comics, man. Right, sure. Oh, we made that part. And yeah. you can't take a joke. That's right. Yeah. I can't take a joke. We make our living talking shit. By other people. Basically, yeah. by other people. Yeah. And then you can't take a joke. Yeah. You say you, he didn't talk to you for three years. How'd y'all rectify it? Or have you? Get back together. All right. Boy, you asked me a lot of tough questions. Oh, bro. shit, my bad. I was in Neiman Marcus. <laughs> okay. Right here in Atlanta. Uh -huh. Steve Harvey came in there. And uh, I thought he was still mad. So I was in the shoe section. He came to the shoe section. So I saw him. 
But I ain't, you know, I ain't say nothing. Oh. And then he said something to me. Good. He a bigger man than you. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, I always, I was never mad at him. I thought he was mad at me. So, right. you know, go and be mad, you know. Oh, damn. Okay. Go and be mad, you know. What? Right. You know, it's amazing, too, when people get mad at me. It, it's kind of funny to me because you can't do nothing. Right, 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 right. You know, just be you mad. Do? You just mad. Yeah. You just wasting your emotional right. energy. Right. Because ain't nobody gonna fuck with me. Right. I mean, I'm not saying I'm bad nigga. Well, I'm no, just right, saying right, 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 right. Me. So at the time, the beef between him and Cat was going on. Uh, I remember that in Detroit when he when Cat called him out. Yep. Yeah. That was fucked up. Yeah. And so, you know. We talked about that a little bit, but I also talked to Cat about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was malicious, nigga. Fuck that. I heard it. What? What Cat said about Steve Harvey there on, on Detroit. You know what it was about? Oh, no, no it was about. No. Well, let me tell you. Damn. Shit, pull up, nigga. Shit, let's talk. Fuck this, man. man. Shit, the fuck, man. This nigga here got a plethora. Plethora, nigga. I play golf. <laughs> got a plethora material. What that was about. Gordon Cat now. Cat mm -hmm. says back in the day we were struggling, you know. Mm -hmm. Driving from city to city doing shows and stuff. You know, all that to it. Cat says he was in a mall. This is what Cat told me. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was in a mall one day, he runs into Steve. Cat got his little boys with him. You know, Cat had adopted mm -hmm. some boys. Right, sure. Let me stop right there and tell this funny story about Cat. Oh, okay. We're going to put a pin right there. All right. We're going right back to it, but go ahead. When we were shooting next Friday. Mm -hmm. Friday after next. Next Friday. Next Friday, okay, before, okay. Cat was homeless. Okay. But he, he had adopted these kids, and they were living in the car. Right. And Cube, I think, let them stay on the set in his dressing room. You know, we all had our own trailers. So Cat comes out to the, <laughs> comes down to the set one day, and he, you know, Emotionally stressed, we like, what, what's up, player? Me, Spoon, cute. And he said, I'm just happy. What you happy about? It? My son, man. My son, my son just wrote. You got yourself together? Yeah, let's do that. My son just wrote <laughs> the alphabets. So we all say, oh, man, well, that is good, bro. That's good. Cat goes back to the trailer, and maybe 10 minutes later, he comes in with his son, who he's homeschooled. And he brings his son in, and first thing that was funny was the boy was like 12. I must say, yeah. damn, how old was he? But damn, uh, not even alone, leave him alone. You said the word retarded, not saying son's retarded. No, he wasn't retarded. All right, but you try to act like he is. The second thing was, we, when he showed us the alphabet, they was all there. But they wasn't in order. <laughs> A C R M D O E A R. Leave that boy alone. So we la we laughed about oh, that. But anyway, Cat, my man, man, oh, man. Yeah. So Cat told me that uh, what all that was about was he was in a mall with his sons, ran up on Steve, and his 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 sons recognized Steve from television, so they were excited, asked Steve for an autograph, mm. and Steve basically Steve basically told him. It's calling the cat now. You know, get, get get the hell out of here. Was Cat famous at the time? Cat wasn't famous at the time. Mm. So his, his son said, Cat Williams, this is what Cat said. His son said, Cat, my daddy. And supposedly now, you know, there's just one side right, sure, sure, we're going with this cat story. He said, who the fuck is Cat? Uh -oh. And so Cat told his sons, don't worry about it, come on. Fast forward down the road seven eight years wow people don't forget and cat never forgot yeah because i remember that roast that when cat Williams went on that stage after cat uh, after yeah. Steve harvey good lord man that that that, that uh that bothered me man the, the story with steve what you said about steve no cat the Williams? dispute between cat and oh steve. oh okay okay i mean it was like uh comics resorting to uh the rap game, you know. Mm. It didn't get physical ever, though. 
No, it didn't get physical. Right, it didn't get physical, right? And it just got disres disrespectful. Disrespectful, right, 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 right. And they both don't work on the same public, shows hardly. Yeah. the same way about Monique and Diaz. Did, but hold on, with, with the cat, with, did, did you help mediate that at all? Did you ever try to do it? What the fuck I look like? Man? Oh, you just didn't like it, nigga. Okay, you didn't help. I thought you was a helpful hand. Help Shit. mediate between who? Cat and, and Steve Harvey. You can say, yo, man. You gonna do that? I don't know. Listen to both sides of this story. Is that the same thing you did with Steve and, I mean, with Monique and DL? Did you help? I mean, you were around there. You're bigger than I am. Did you, did you maybe reach out and say, can y'all, can we squash this? Me and DL laughed about it. We did a benefit show the other day, me, DL, and Cedric for uh, uh, people that got killed in Buffalo. Oh, wow, okay. We talked about it. We laughed about right, it, you know. Right, I, right. I mean, I, I've... Uh, I was spoken on it, but right, right. But no, I'm 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 no mediator, brother. Okay, all right, though. You got your own problems. <laughs> Shit, okay, you got your own problems. No, I I get that. Wow, that's interesting, man. Bro, that's heavy, man. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, man. Um also before I let you leave, let me go to your, your page. We go to, we go to your IG. We creep on your IG and so we kind of mean your Instagram. We look at some of the pictures you have on it. You know, we go see my, my, my assistants look at the shit and say, Let me ask him about this picture. I'm asking what he's thinking about this situation. And so let me ask you as we looked up, what was you thinking when you did this, when you had this picture right here? What was all this happening here? I see Faze on. Are you on tour with uh, Nipsey, Nipsey, uh, Nipsey Russell from the Tin Man? Did you, I mean, did you see that? That's the did Jacksons, you? Oh, man. shit. That's what, I thought that was the oh, whole, my man, bad. Bro, I you? thought that was somebody else. I thought that was Nipsey Russell. And when I was on that show, Faze out and now with the Jacksons. And after the show, they called me to the, called me and Faison to the dressing room. I said, "Oh shit, what did I say? What did I Nothing. say?" Nothing. And I went back there, and uh, we were back there. Y'all real nice guys. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, but yeah. When, when we went to dress, they had this big layout of chicken, and don't none of them eat meat. Oh really? So yeah. they didn't address me, but they told Faison, Faison, take all the chicken, man. Just fill your oh. pockets up. Why you do the Faison? Why do you think Faison would eat all the meat? And you know Faison went off. Okay, he did all he did all the meat. Yeah, DC yeah. eat chicken? When the fuck you off at me all right, that? Right. Oh man, yeah, that's what that was about. All right, all right, all right, all right. That was that was that was dope. All right, but now what about this picture right uh here? What we got? What we got? What we got? Mr. Uh you look like uh a man called Hawk. Remember that show? <laughs> look at the bling bling. Look at your boy, you're cleaner than a mother. That's why people say you and Steve Harvey look alike now. <laughs> that was in uh like a shit that's, in, that's in Oakland, California, man. Matter of fact, that was one one oh. afternoon I was going to host the uh, Bay Area Black Comedy Company. What? You, well, you clean. You, you got a tailor to make sure clothes? took that stuff? picture, huh? You got a tailor to make sure clothes? Specific thing? I, I got a couple of tailors. A couple. Damn, that motherfucker. That, that's who hitting my dead boy. That's you. You next for the next host of the Family Feud when Steve <laughs> give it up. Man, <laughs> shit. All right, all right. Well, all right. What about this one right here? Talk to me here with this right here. What was you thinking right here? What was this? I don't remember. And what that. are those, nigga? What, are, what you got on? Hey, man. Uh, apparently, did you know at Ross is on Tuesdays? <laughs> on Ross? You go to Ross? You get extra ten percent off on Tuesdays if you're over fifty-five. Hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, news alert: Don DC Curry shops at Ross. The hell wrong with that? Nigga, we Ross is cheaper than Washington. Damn, damn. Oh, shit. God damn. So you guys just buy some new clothes every time. Where my drawers and throw them away, man. Hell no. That's what a boss do. You got your boss drawers. You got boss drawers. I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember that. I don't know where that was. I have, I have no idea. It has something to do with Fox, and it looked like, you look like earthquakes in there and shit. Like earthquake, bro. But uh, look at you relaxed and everything. I don't ever see you dressed up like that. I mean, dressed down like that, except today. You know, you, you, you about to do my show again? <laughs> Smart ass. All right, we got one more. Oh, that's it right there. All right, cool. That's a, well. That's now, what, what did they think was so interesting about that? You don't who dress, are your assistants? No, hold on. Man? You don't dress like that. They were like, "Who the fuck?" Is, look at the picture before, and then look at this picture here. Look like before and after. Look like you hit the lottery before. Uh, this was before the lottery, and then after the lottery. It looks like that to me. Like you walking around in tux all the time. I don't look like that, never. <laughs> Ever, nigga, okay? Even when I'm washing clothes, nigga, I'm about to throw away. <laughs> five for five. Five for five. Five for five. Five for five. Give it up to Stubbs' next brother. Funny guy. He's an Atlanta host, a lot of shows in Atlanta, tanned it up. He's 
want to kind of host and put that pressure on the headline of the other comedian that's out there and ass. You know, he ain't no mildly nice guy. He gets vicious behind the mic. You'll see why. Give it up for the one and only Mario Torres! White in the damn cabinet. <laughs> this is some mouthwash crap, right? <laughs> Clap it up, you wash up. Go to wash ups. A lot of wash uppers. <laughs> you don't want to waste a whole tub of shit. <laughs> I'm just gonna hit where it's hot at real fast. <laughs> Clean thieves in here. Where y'all at? Clap it up. Where the grown people that steal or sneak shit into somewhere. Where y'all at? Huh? You know they're stealing, don't you? <laughs> Look, one thing about black people, we don't mind paying for shit, but we gonna sneak something in here. I'm up there, what it is. Family PTA meeting. Movies. Oh Lord, we 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 created sneaking shit into the movies. Have a whole barbecue plate in the back. <laughs> you got three rolls up for you. Somebody said, "Damn, I ain't know they sold catfish in this." <laughs> Somebody got their phone on. Hey man, I got two slaws somewhere. I'm missing a slaw. <laughs> Uh -huh. Smiling, happy. This is a good grown crowd right here. This is a crowd I like. People that's got it together, we look good, don't we? Huh? Look at us. Mm -hmm. Grown people, look at your forehead shining and shit. <laughs> they look quarantined there. Some of us look good, didn't we? You got good new roach skin on your head. <laughs> you see the new roach in the side of <laughs> I'm telling you, I can say it, y'all grown. But one thing about it, when you get to a certain age, find somebody that you can relate to. It's fine. I don't think opposites attract. The stupid shit I've ever heard in my life. Opposites attract. <laughs> shit me. If you smoke, find you somebody to smoke. <laughs> if you drink, find somebody to drink. <laughs> That's what turned you on. Me and my wife has found what turns us on. You have to find that common denominator within two people. Because y'all don't even know each other. But find something that turns y'all on. And it ain't always about sex all the time. It ain't always about sex. Turn each other on mentally. Me and my wife found what turned us on. We done start stealing together. <laughs> turned on you as your spouse that came in with some shit they done stole. <laughs> my wife stole my whole son's birthday cake. My puppies. I don't know how the hell she did. And I was in on the heist. She told me, pull up right here and keep the car running. It was okay. <laughs> You know cakes ain't cheap. Six to what about fifty six to nine? Somebody, anybody got key and no? See, they they up. Just just COVID icing is hard to find. Seven dollars for well, yeah, a Avengers birthday cake. One sheet, one plaque, huh? <laughs> My wife went in there and got that cake. And I know she had stolen when she came out. She was walking fast. She was walking fast. I said, what happened? She said, pull back. Let's, let's get the fuck out of here. It ain't more sexier 
than to see a fine ass woman holding some shit she done stole. <laughs> you don't know how hard your thing will get until <laughs> your old lady steals some shit. She stole that cake. <laughs> and just to hear her justify why she stole it, turn me on even more. <laughs> I said, why the fuck did you do this? Break a left, don't ask questions. <laughs> Find you somebody. It's just like you. Mario Torre, I know that. Okay. Let me ask you a question. If y'all both steal, and she get caught, you snitching? Hell no. But you go, you go I mean, look at us, man. We in our 30s and 40s. They ain't not going to take us to jail. Really? No, they ain't going to tell us. They ain't going to pay for this shit. There's a lot of people in jail in their 30s and 40s. Not for no <laughs> salmon and birthday cakes. <laughs> Salmon. 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 Write it down. I went. I said, well, since she stole the birthday cake, I had the upper. Okay. I said, oh, no. You can't outdo me. Right. Yeah. You can't outdo me. Come on now. <laughs> she stole the birthday cake out of Kroger. Okay. So a lot of people say it's hard to steal out of public. So I said, ha, watch this. <laughs> You know when you go to the seafood department yeah. and you get the whole salmon, not the salmon that's froze or wrapped right, right. The, the long piece. The long piece. Okay. I leaned over the counter and I looked at the damn seafood man. I said, give me one from the back. Ooh. Okay. Uh, with the face on it. <laughs> <laughs> he never bought salmon with the face, but they got him back there. Okay, okay, yeah. He brought me the salmon. You know when they wrap it in that white paper? Okay. Mm -hmm. Going in the back and in the seafood bar. Yeah, yeah. And then they stick that little sticker on it. Okay. Once they weigh it, yeah. they print it out. What are you going to pay for? Right. What are you to pay for? Yeah. The you do know that the seafood department is a little moist. It's a little wet over there. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> when you leave there, okay. go down the Kool Aid out. <laughs> Get some pack of Kool Aid and okay. stick that on the bottom. Go to self checkout. <laughs> Yes, it was. 
I'm not the type of guy I told y'all to steal already. Okay. <laughs> now, I don't bring nobody car. Right, right, right. right. You're a man. Yeah, I, I steal what makes sense. Okay. I dabble in future used goods. Okay. All right, all right. Kevin Hart, we did the show with Tate Comedy Central. Okay. Shots out to Comedy Central. I did two specials on there. Uh, okay. uh, the Next Level and Heart of the City. So the night we taped it in Atlanta, I take Next Level in LA, we take Heart of the City in Atlanta. So he was like, hey man, you know what? I'm gonna treat y'all out. Okay. Damn it, let's go to Magic City. Oh, oh. Okay. <clears throat> he shot all of us thousand dollars. No, sir. No, sir. It was five. It was, it was four. Three of us. Four of us on the right. show. Ba, 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 ba. Damn. A stack. And we ride with them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you get in quickly. Yeah, and I was already tucking money in my bosom. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, not to put in your bosom. Well, I don't care. I don't even know what he said. <laughs> All I know is we go to the strip club. Right, right, right. Was what I heard. Right. So we was there. He took us there, man. Got us VIP. Man showed out, throwing money everywhere. And it was, lo and behold, he left. Okay. You yeah. know, big time. I got that. Yeah. You do. He got shit to do. Yeah. <laughs> I was right behind him. What? How much did you spend? Uh, they already had a bottle. They already had Why we got it? Why are we making so much money? And we ain't still in that. Listen here. The bottles are already. Man, I'm out of here. Bye bye. Man, hell no. Give it up for Mario. Hey man, listen, everybody, man, uh, if you haven't heard of me, if you haven't heard of me, you have now, man. Shouts out to Pierre, shouts out to Comedy and Hype, Patty Room. Mario Tori, T O R Y, on all social media platforms. Mario Tori, T O R Y, is that simple. Look out for me, man. I got movies and everything on Tubi. Pride video, man, it's going down. Let's give it up. But look, man, I appreciate that you came here, man. We give we give all our guests what's called a swag bag. That means everything in here is black owned, brother. We give it is to that you. Right? Yes, brother. We give, we give gifts on my show. Hey, okay. I heard about your talk show. You the man. Yeah, you don't give shit away, but some advice. No, we be having liquid over in cigars. Oh, 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 so. <laughs> so pull out whatever you see and, and look at it, and I'll tell you what it is, and we'll talk about it right there. Pull, pull out whatever we're talking about. It's black owned, brother. Black man. Oh, what is that? First and for oh, that's a special right there. Now. I didn't realize, you know, that was a large. You need to the, the double the, the number. Extra. And a green. Yeah, the past it right there, brother. See, Everybody, this you, is a black grab bag right. where they give you shit to advertise for them right, right, there you for go. free. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's that, that's the that's what that shirt is. Sorry, it's just a large. Just cut the back oh, out. That's sorry. That's sorry. <laughs> that's, no, 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 no. You can wear that? You can wear that? Hey, no, I'm not going to wear it. Oh, shit. Who can wear that? Some, some um, young lady in the house wear some, it? Some of my company. Oh, no, boy. okay, company, okay, man. okay. I, ain't mad. I appreciate that then. I don't mind being in the back, in the front of some fine young lady. That's right. Okay. That's right. Oh, yeah. Well, there it is. That's a, and it's made out of good cotton, brother. Yeah. The kind we used to pick. <laughs> <laughs> That's some good shit right there, brother. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank cheap. you, man. Oh, you got it, brother. What else is in there? Let's see if there's anything good in here. And, oh, damn. The cup right there, that's the cup right there you ran. It's called put in your comment, put in the comment. It's my slogan on the Comedy Hype News. Yeah, why you have your name on here, man? We, we don't need that name on that one right there, brother. It's just it's my slogan. Oh, no, man. you don't understand, bro. I don't? I, I, I'm trying to advertise that. You get in my ass now. You only have a cup with my you, name you on it. Really, your name on here is too small. Oh, damn, I like that. I like, okay, okay, teach me, brother. Come on, man. Okay, so like this one here, you know. Oh, my name fell off this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, damn. Yeah, wa wa washed off. My name was. <laughs> Don't worry about the pie. The pie is not important. Come on. The is what we're talking about on this show. 
<laughs> okay, but that's what. Yeah, it's it's my, it's my slogan on the show, man. I, I say, know, put but it the cups on. You know, you be advertising. You know, uh, you know how much advertisers pay. Like when you're watching a movie, and sure. you can see a Coca Cola sitting there. Right, sure. But Come you on, ain't man. part of that. You right? You're my PA friend. Sitting right there, man. Okay, I will. I have it on that right there. From now on, I'm remember that. Okay, what else we got? Damn, you you eat my shit up in here, boy. I'm scared to get them. All right, that's a card game right there. You can play it with your friends or your little honey, whatever comes over, and it tells it's a trivia game about all black hip, about comedy, all kind of stuff, movies, TV, stand up comics. You're probably up in there. You pull yeah, it out. Right, right. Yes, you can get that comedy hype backslash shop. You can buy that right there. Okay? It's fun, hours of fun with your friends. You know, when you're smoking a cigar, drinking that wine, you pull that out, man. Damn the Uno, okay? Or the poker. Play some black owned stuff sometime, Mr. Uh, Curry. Okay. All right. All right. Gotta read some trivia. Thank you know you. black trivia, comedy trivia, don't you? You're some, part of it. Some of it. All right. What else we got in that? Oh, shit. That's the real thing right there, boy. Read what that title said, boy. What that title said, boy. What that title said. Boy! Woo! My 100 homies and phonies of Hollywood. Boy, there's a lot of homies, homies of, and guess who? You in interviewed me when That's you were right. writing this book. Nigga, I don't know which one you are. But I ain't in here no damn way. Yes, you way. are, nigga. You in the D's, nigga. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were the homie or the phony? I don't know. It's a, it has an index. that You can go to the index and find out where you at, brother. You Black book with an index? Okay, nigga. I play golf. I'm a golf player. Let's see, it's been quite a while. Index in front of the in back the, of the In the front, man. It's in the front. It has numbers and lines and it tells you what, yeah. And hey, you mean I'm in the book real, man? Look at it up and see what it said. Go to the D's. I know what the hell my name starts oh, okay, with. Okay, okay, okay. I play golf. All right. I don't see it, though. You don't see the, you don't see the name of the D's? It must be in the next edition. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's what it is, the next edition, man. <laughs> I ain't in this damn book. <laughs> it's, all, it's stories of all the celebrities I met. You're going to be in the next one, because now we're closer, because you've been on my show. <laughs> Thank you for coming by, y'all. Give it up for the one and only. My Mr. pleasure, Dad, DC, man. Curry, my Give pleasure, applause, man. man. Look, if you like that show, man, if you like this show, please hit the subscribe button or the notifi notification bell, y'all. I love y'all. I thank you. I thank my man, Don D.C. Curry, for coming on here, man. Please, man, what can they, that camera right there, what can they catch you at, brother? I got somebody to tell you that. Oh, shit. Okay. You, that, Young that. social media man. I don't, man. You have I no idea know. what you're, are, you, are you on Don D.C. Curry or something? Uh, D.C. Curry TV. Okay. There it is right there. I hope y'all picked that up, camera. D.C. Dot Curry dot E.T. That's Damn. Instagram, man. Eh? D.C. Curry TV. All right, but there it is, Subscribe. It's free. Is your subscription free? Yes, it is. Really? On this right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need to subscribe. Give I, me I, I, I want you to, man. Man, I really appreciate Look, DC, on some real shit, man. You came here, you sat down, you kept it real with me. You're you want it real, right man. Let me tell you something, man. It's about six or seven guys that I really respect and, and hold in high esteem in this game. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not blowing smoke up sure. your ass. And you one of them, man. I appreciate that, bro. I really appreciate I that, appreciate man. Same you, here, man. Same here. You're a man of your word. I love seeing you. You see, I come out and support you when I see you performing and stuff. Yeah, I came man. out, yeah, I remember one time you was in Dallas doing uh, the improv. I just came to see you, man. I just like watching you, man. You're a good brother. I wish them, but success for you. And I'm not, it's not some bullshit to say. You came, you sat down, you talked that shit, and you kept it 100 with me, man. <laughs> I appreciate, I appreciate that, y'all. Give them some more love, love y'all. We'll catch y'all later on the yeah. panel. I'll holler at y'all later. It is what it is. Bye. Turn me up a little bit. Turn me up a little bit. If you like that show, like, subscribe, and comment below. You know, hit the, hit the notification bell. Hit the subscribe button, man. We want you around. Appreciate it.